history. It's CU's final regular season road trip. The kickoff's coming up. News 4 Sports presents CU Buffalo's football. Live from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, it's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the University of Kansas Jayhawks. Welcome to Lawrence, Kansas. It's homecoming for the Kansas Jayhawks and the final road game of the year for the CU Golden Buffaloes. I'm Les Shapiro along with Jim Ryan and for the last day and a half traveling with these buffs, Jimmy and I have been trying to gauge whether or not they are emotionally ready for this game. We know this, Jim. Last week, they were not up for the game against Oklahoma State. They were heavy favorites going in and they won by uh, 17 to three. Yeah, well, you talk about this season, you talk about the great schedule they play. The result of the big schedule they play is every week you have to gauge that emotional level. The big games against highly ranked opponents, are you going to be up for them constantly? Or are you going to guard against a letdown against a lesser opponent? And Bill McCartney recognizes this. He says that the emotional is to the physical as four is to one. And what that means is that your emotional energy with which you play is four times as important as your physical ability. They did come out flat a week ago. I don't expect that to happen this week. They had a great week of practice, a very short week of practice. Gave them some time off. And if nothing else, they're well rested. Colorado football team. And, and well learned. I think they learned something yeah. from that game last week against Oklahoma State. We do know this. The offensive line for CU is probably ready because they've been talking all week about wanting to get that Heisman Trophy for Rashawn Salam. Rashawn Salam, over 1,500 yards. He's only 64 yards short of the single season rushing record set by Eric Bieniemy, And the offensive line has now made it a team goal. And when you don't have the number one championship at stake anymore, at least, you know, not only an outside chance at it, that you need other goals to shoot for. And they say, we want to get the uh, Heisman for Rashawn. He's not a nifty guy, but he's going to run durable, long. He's a, he's a speed guy, and we'll get into the secondary quickly. And when you talk about the Kansas Jayhawks, you talk about the running game. They're one of the best rushing teams in the nation, led by a little guy named June Henley. June Henley last year. Look, he already ranks ninth in KU career uh, yardage, and he's only a sophomore. Last year, over 1,100 yards, and that was number one among all true freshmen a year ago. Set a big eight record. He runs behind a tremendous offensive line. John Jones and Hesley Hempstead are the leaders. They're the earth and quake. These guys are both about 300 pounds apiece, and they lead a very strong and uh, very good KU offensive line. Uh, considered one of the best, if not the best, guard tandems in the country. Kansas comes in with a 5-4 and four record. The head coach, Glenn Mason, says so far they have underachieved. However, they feel if they get two games, two wins in their final two games, they could very well go to a bowl game. CU, on the other hand, 8-1. and one. They're looking at a date on January 2nd, very probably in the Fiesta Bowl, if they can win out. We'll be right back with the kickoff from Lawrence. CU Buffs football on News 4 is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft, by United Airlines, by Kaiser Permanente, by Ride Arrangers, by Ag Mardor, and by Samsonite. Hey, football fans, it's the video coupon. Call Pizza Hut now during the Wade Phillips Show and order your Meat Lover's Pizza. A medium Meat Lover's Pizza loaded with six delicious meat toppings, only $8.99. Any second medium pizza, just five bucks. Call now during Wade, because when it's over, so is this offer.
the light. Clear the air. Carpool. In the last 30 days at Mike Norton Ford, we've sold over 100 of these trucks at $15,977. So I bought another 100 of them. Now it's truck month, and we've got a $1,000 rebate on them. The new price, just $14,977. 1995 F-150s, all four-wheel drives with air conditioning, anti-lock brakes, airbags, and overdrive transmission. While 100 of them last, now just $14,977. In Aurora, or call 1-800-BIG-MIKE. We're at Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Kansas. This stadium seats a little better than 50,000, and you see that grassy knoll in the background. That's called Campanile Hill, and if they want, they could fit another 10,000 fans up there to watch Kansas play. Won't need it today. You don't think so? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Hey, you're right. There are a lot of empty seats here in the stands. A lot of people have given up on this Kansas team, despite the fact they might still get to a bowl game at the end of the year. We've got a partly cloudy day here in Lawrence, and... Uh, Quite a bit of wind, a very brisk wind coming out of the south or from your right going to the left. Temperature is 55 degrees, pretty good football weather, a little bit of humidity, and Jimmy, you can feel it going right through you a bit with 40% yeah. there on the scales. And uh, we should have a little more sun as the day progresses. Right now, let's go down to the field and talk to our Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You were talking about the KU Jayhawks and somewhat disappointed in their season. Two games stand out for the Kansas Jayhawks this year. Earlier in the year against TCU, they were undefeated when starting quarterback Ashiki Preston punctured his lung, had to leave the ball game. Kansas lost that game to TCU, lost its national ranking. A few weeks ago, here in Lawrence against Oklahoma, the Jayhawks had a 17-7 second half lead and lost that to the Sooners. So they come into today's ball game five and four, but in their hearts, they really feel they could be seven and two, and even a loss to Colorado today and a victory next week over Missouri leaves the Jayhawks eight and three and possibly going to a nice bowl. It's been a tough season for them. You talked about the win. It is very strong out of the South. That's one reason it's such a nice day today here in Lawrence, but it definitely will affect the kicking game. Andy Mitchell, the CU punter, came by me before the ball game and joked, there's no way I want to kick into this win. It will definitely be a factor. Now, the CU Buffs, like you all have talked about, coming off that disappointing loss to Oklahoma State, before the ball game, Bill McCartney, in his pregame speech, looked every one of the CU Buffs in the eye and told each and every player why he felt this was his most special team. He said he's never been more proud of a CU football team, and he went to each and every player and individually told him why he felt that way about this team. This team appears very ready to come back and prove to everybody that it might be a top five team in the nation after two weeks of disappointing performances. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. And you're looking at the coin flip. And Kansas has brought out quite a few of its players. Yeah, I think that's their 20 seniors playing their final home game. 13 of those guys are starters on this football team. And that's why I think Kansas is going to be a very emotionally ready. Talk about the emotional state of Colorado. For Kansas, I think they are going to be very emotionally ready because it's the last home game for those 20 seniors. You might have also noticed that CU will receive the initial kickoff of this ball game. Well, the series record between these two clubs, CU has been dominant. Leading the series, 32 wins, 18 losses, and three ties. CU has won the last nine meetings. And last year, the Buffs won 38 to 14. Had a wonderful day on offense, racking up 598 yards. If you're wondering about last week and the, momen the momentum these two teams bring into this game, well, Kansas lost to Nebraska. Never really in that game. A final of 45 to 17. And the Buffs beat Oklahoma State. 17 to 3. You can see how brisk that wind is as you watch the gentleman there carrying around the KU flag. It reminds me a little bit of Oklahoma, Jimmy, yeah. where the uh, wind comes whipping down the plane. And there you see Rashad Salam. He's, uh, you know, a very reluctant Heisman Trophy candidate, isn't he? <laughs> but the offensive line and some of the coaches for CU have told us this, year, this week that uh, they're going to work on that Heisman for him. And I think Bill McCartney will keep Rashawn in the football game even late if this game is out of hand to get him you know a big day to keep him up in the minds of those Heisman Trophy voters of whom you are one. I am. He had a pretty good day uh, last week against Oklahoma State. You saw the graphic there 174 yards and there's Glenn Mason the 44 year old coach of the University of Kansas. He has not had much success. In fact he hasn't had any success against CU. He is 0-6 lifetime since taking over seven years ago 
at Kansas. And previous to his stint at Kansas, he spent a couple of years as the head coach at Kent State. Yeah, he's a uh, Woody Hayes protege out of Ohio State. And he's really been very popular here because over the last three seasons, he's 23 and 19. He is responsible for turning around this Kansas program. The kicker for Kansas will be the freshman out of Mesquite, Texas, Jeff McCord. And back to receive for the Buffs. On the left, we've got the freshman, Herschel Troutman. And on the right, hard to tell from here, but right now it looks like it might be Ray Carruth or Lyndon Henry, yeah, the other Henry. freshman. So a Lyndon couple Henry. of freshmen back there, Henry and Troutman, to receive the kickoff. That's a duo we haven't seen back there yet. In fact, I don't believe Lyndon Henry has a kickoff return all year. He's not going to get one now. <laughs> McCord kicking with the wind puts it five yards behind the end zone. So the Buffs will start with the ball at their own 20-yard line. Let's line up CU's offense for you. The record-holding quarterback for the Buffs, Cordell Stewart. And the men he'll be handing off to and throwing to, Rashawn Salam, Christian Fourier, and Desmond Dennis, the tight ends, Ray Carruth, and Michael Westbrook back from injuries last week. The offensive line, led by the left tackle, Tony Birdie, and the center, Brian Stoltenberg. And the Buffs come out running. That's Salam, and he might have gotten a half yard, but that's about it. Stopped by Don Davis, the linebacker, among others. And here is your Kansas defense. Up front, Harris, right, a freshman, Brett McGraw, and Steve Harvey. And the linebackers are Davis, Thorne, and Rogers. This is a very small but a very quick group. There are your defensive backs. Harris, Brew, McBurrows, and Kwame Lassiter, a good one. Also a very young group. KU starting three true freshmen on their defense. Second and nine from the Buffs from their own 21. Cordell. Drops it low, and Savoy cannot hold on to it. Incomplete. In talking to Elliot Uzelak a little bit this week, he said the things to look for for the Colorado offense may be running between the tackles because they are small. They're going to take away the option. They're similar to Nebraska is KU's defense in the fact they're small but very quick and it's be tougher to run the option. They also want to get the ball downfield in the middle of the field to post deep crossing routes. So look for that from Cordell Stewart. Third and nine. That's Fourier, the tight end in motion. Cordell going deep over the middle. Westbrook has it. Deep into Kansas territory and inside the 30-yard line. On the coverage, Kwame Lassiter. There is a penalty flag down on the field back at the Buffs 42. And they might call Lassiter for holding on to Michael Westbrook. And that's exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to get the ball downfield against this KU defense. Well, if it stands, it's a 51-yard pass play from Stewart to Westbrook. We're going to see this from the uh, low angle here. You see good protection. And Westbrook coming across the field. Lassiter's got him one-on-one -on -one coverage. And he just can't hold up with uh, hold on to him, but he does catch him. Rashawn Salam with room up the middle. He's inside the 20 and another first down for the Buffs. And, and we apologize. We thought there was a flag down there. There's a yellow marker down on the field, but apparently not a penalty flag. So You're right. It looks just like a penalty flag back at the Buffs 42. It might be an orange. It looks like somebody might have splattered a, a large orange onto the field. Yeah, there's some more. There's there either some big leaves or <laughs> oranges. Another first down for CU. Salam again in another big hole, and he yeah. could get in. Yes, he does. Touchdown, CU. That didn't take long, did it? A 22-yard touchdown run, and Rashawn Salam now holds the season record for touchdowns by a CU athlete. 20 touchdowns for Salam, and he breaks the record set by Bobby Anderson back in 1969. Boy, it might be tough riding home on the team playing with Bobby now. Yeah. <laughs> now that one of his records has been broken. <laughs> Bobby, of course, doing the radio telecast for KOA today. Boscaricci on for the extra point attack, and he has it. And the Buffs have a 7-0 lead. 
Well, boy, that's, a, that's impressive to, for Colorado to just drive right down the field in just a couple of plays. And there you see Rashawn Salam. He gets the touchdown. Great blocking up front by Chris Naoli and Derek West. See, West gets right under the linebacker, Davis. And, boy, there's just no one there in the path of Rashawn Salam. Good downfield blocking by the wide receivers, too. There's the low angle. You see Rashawn coming right at you. And, Les, you could go through that hole. I don't know if I'd be quick enough before the linebackers got there, Jimmy. I've James lost kid I, with a nice I've block lost down a step <laughs> since, uh, <laughs> since my college days. Well, it didn't take the bus very long to get on the board. A minute 19 into this game, and see you with a 7 0 lead. And, and that's what we talked about in the open. Rashad Salam, not a real nifty guy. When you think about him, he's not a guy that puts on tremendous moves, not great cutting ability. But what he does is hits the hole quickly. The offensive linemen love that. He gets into the secondary and then just allows his strength to take over. You even see on that play where uh, a KU defender does get an arm on him, but he just drives him right into the end zone for the score. Junior out of San Diego. He's already broken and one CU record today. He's about to break another. He needs 30-some yards to set the single-season record for rushing. So let's look for that later in the day from Rashawn. That last scoring drive, five plays, 80 yards, and just a minute, 19. That was too easy. Well, we wondered about the emotional level. I think they answered right out of the shoot, yeah. huh? I think there was a little doubt about the emotional level coming into this football game for Colorado. Back to receive the kickoff from Voskaritchian for Kansas. It'll be number two, George White, and number six, Ashande Smith. And remember, Voskaritchian going against a very stiff wind here. And look at the way it holds that ball up. A return of about seven yards by Ashande Smith. All right, let's line up the Kansas offense for you. At quarterback is the senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Ashiki Preston. He runs it better than he throws it. But you could say that about this whole Kansas team. Yeah. Well, that's Glenn Mason football. He's going to try to pound you with the running game. He's got a big, strong offensive line. We talked about them. And they're going to just give it to LT Levine and June Henley. And the receivers are Smith, Hosea Friday, and the tight end out of Denver, Thomas Jefferson High School, Brent Williford. That's JT Levine. He is across the 35. Call it a gain of about four. And the rest of the Kansas offense for you. We talked extensively about the two guards, Hemstead and Jones. They are two of the best in the conference, if not the country. And outside of their center, Jared Smith, all the four remaining offensive linemen are all right around 300 pounds. It's a huge offensive line for KU. Preston has completed 54% of his passes this year, five touchdowns and five interceptions. And right now, He's staring at a second and five. Going deep. That pass is incomplete. It was in the hands of Andre Carter and dropped. And on the coverage was the cornerback, Dalton Simmons. Well, a good pass by Preston, but Carter could not hold on. Here's the CU defense. Ryan Olson will be a nose tackle today and start of the injured carry Hicks. We'll talk a little bit about Hicks later in the show. We do it. Expect Hicks to be back, possibly as early as next week. And the defensive backfield, Hudson and Simmons at the corner, Liamidi and Rosga playing very well at safeties. And Preston needs to take a timeout. I think the play clock was running down. It was only about eight seconds to go. Didn't feel like he could get a playoff. Well, as Kansas takes a break, so will we with the Buffs leading 7-0. Over 700 flights coming and going every business day, fanning out nonstop to nearly 100 cities. Covering the sky with more flights from Denver than all other airlines combined. A kaleidoscopic array that could only be brought to you by United and United Express. We'll move mountains for you. Come fly our friendly skies. My husband used to be a total channel surfing clicker freak. Whoa! Until we bought an Ankmar garage door with a LiftMaster automatic door opener. Whoa! I like our Ankmar door because it's guaranteed, it's insulated to save money, and it's safe because the LiftMaster protector system knows when something's in its way. I love that! But we love the LiftMaster automatic opener because now we can enjoy the television. 
Whatever your reason, for the best in garage doors and openers, call Ankmar Door 321-2361. Test in school today. I miss by the word mainstream. You know what my score was? We get a little crazy. In the future, everything will be faster. Faster! The speed limit will be. Denver's got a new radio station. Do you know where to find it? 96.5. The Peak. Denver's rock alternative. Listen to the Peak. Les Shapiro and Jim Ryan with you back in Lawrence, Kansas. Kansas has the ball on its own 38-yard line. Down 7 and nothing to the CU Buffs. We're looking at third and five. And Preston dumps it over the middle. That pass is complete to Rodney Harris, and he's very close to first down yardage. In fact, he ran into the first down marker. There you see Ted Johnson on the tackle. And Ted Johnson's had a terrific year. What they did that time is it just lined up Rodney Harris. He's really a wide receiver, 6'6", 205, at a tight end position. Kind of cleared out on some uh, the, the wide receivers and then just brought the tight end across the middle and got the first down. You see Preston's numbers there, the most important numbers to him right now. First and 10 at his own 44. Here's the pitch to the fullback, Costello Good. Excuse me, that's Levine. And Levine is run out at his own 48-yard line. A gain of four. Matt Russell made the tackle on Levine. He and Henley have very similar numbers this year. Levine with 532 yards rushing and Henley with 539. They do spread the ball around quite a bit on this. Yeah, offense. we talked about Henley at the top of the broadcast and, and failed to mention Levine. Levine often is the starter, or has been the starter the last few games because Henley was out early with a shoulder injury, but he is healthy back to 100%. I expect to see him quite a bit this afternoon. Three receivers all lined up to the right of the quarterback. One goes in motion right now. That's Smith. We'll yeah. get a flag, and it looks like it'll be procedure against Kansas. Flag. going to be on the tight end, Williford, I believe. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five yards. Repeat second down. Well, the name Williford probably rings a bell to most of you in the Denver metro area. Brent went to Thomas Jefferson High School, played for Herman Motes there. And he's not a big receiver for them. Only two catches on the year, but a tremendous blocker, and that's why he's the starting tight end, because they like to run the football. He was an all-stater out of TJ. Most valuable player in the state championship game. Over the middle, complete again to Harris. But he doesn't get very far. He's run down by Mike Phillips, the CU linebacker, and there are a couple of penalty flags down. Colorado just give Kansas that play all day, and it's only about a three-yard gain at the most. They did get a first down with the same play a few minutes ago. Listen to the call. Face mask. On the defense, five yards, added on to the end of the run. Of course, they won't give him the penalty every time. We're going to see Harris is coming across the middle, right in front of the linebackers, and Phillips comes up and makes a nice play. But as you saw at the very beginning, when he first reached out, he got the left hand on the face mask of Harris, and it's only a five-yard penalty, not a first down. It's got to be tempting, Jimmy, you being a former pro linebacker. If it's the only part of the equipment you can reach, you usually <laughs> yeah. go for it, right? You feel like you're going to lose it, but if you keep it up, holding on, it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. This is Henley, and he's racked up quickly by the linebacker, Matt Russell. Well, you talked earlier about the season that Ted Johnson has been having. He and Matt Russell, the two inside linebackers, are as good as you'll find anywhere. Oh, I agree. Uh, I really think that that's a great tandem, and both have a chance to be all big eight, especially Ted Johnson. I think Ted Johnson's going to make a great pro linebacker. I think he's right out of the mold of Greg Beaker, who's playing for the L.A. Raiders now. It's a cliche, but it's true in Ted Johnson's case. He just has a nose for the ball. Yeah, he just makes plays. Knows where the play is going, and he's always there to stop it. Third and four for Kansas. They're at midfield. Preston with a good rush on him by Mike Phillips. And that pass is incomplete, intended for Henley, and that'll bring up fourth down. You know, Nebraska, uh, or Kansas came out against Nebraska a week ago and decided we can't run the football. We're going to try to throw it. It did not work. 
two of their first three passes by that man, Ashiki Preston, picked off. And they come out today, and although they're not trying to throw the ball downfield, they're mixing the pass and the run. Darren Simmons, the punter for Kansas, averaging 39 yards on the year, and Chris Hudson will return it. He's averaging a little better than 10 yards per return. Kansas is missing a player. And they better hurry, or they're going to have a... And they do. They have to take a timeout. Yeah, they burn their second timeout, and we don't even have four minutes gone in this ballgame. Kansas is down to its last timeout of the half. CU with a 7-0 lead. We've got 11-15 to go in the first quarter, and the Buffs are about to get the ball back. Saw that shot of Glenn Mason. There's one thing that burns a coach. It's mental errors. And for having a special teams guy miss his assignment by not being on the field when he's supposed to, and then having to burn a timeout as a result, he, he's going to get an earful from Mason. Maybe not right now, but I'm sure he will sometime during this coming week. Uh, and I'm sure Mason is wondering, what is this guy thinking on the sideline? He knows we're in a punt situation. He yeah. knows he's on the punting team. Why isn't he out there? Yeah. Glenn Mason, like I said, was really responsible for turning this Kansas program around. was not good, but in the early 80s and just in the last three years especially, Mason has uh, really turned it around. And 92, I guess, was their best year as they went 8-4 and four and went to the Aloha Bowl, beat BYU. There's your timeout situation. Kansas has already used two. And now we're ready to resume play. Or maybe we're not. Hard to tell what's uh, holding things up right now. We can tell you this, it's not a TV timeout. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Simmons to punt, Hudson to receive. The wind at his back, and it's a bit of a line drive, and Hudson will let it go, and it takes a convenient bounce for the Jayhawks, and out of bounds at the CU three-yard line. We are going to take a break now after that 48-yard punt by Simmons. Cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. The cold one. Those who've discovered a smooth draft taste. You know, I've been looking for that. The world is a very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. the air share a ride on an all-new baywatch a riptide in the romance i'm not working with him and that's all there is to it crashes in on stephanie's sister logan dumps me and i'm still incredibly attracted to him i mean i don't get it now will caroline's first day on the job i was watching logan that's why i missed the rest be logan's last your sister misses a rescue and i get transferred for breaking up with him but he won't get away with it on an all-new baywatch Tonight at 6 on Denver's TV 20. With 11.07 to go in the first quarter, CU with the ball and a 7-0 lead. But it won't be easy scoring this time around because CU is starting with the ball at its own three-yard line. It's a bit cool down on the field. That's why Cordell Stewart, just minutes after the game has started, is still trying to stretch out a little. Yeah. Senior out of Marrero, Louisiana. He holds the CU records for career passing yardage and for touchdown passes, and he has a couple of three games left to add on to those figures. Out of the backfield is Rashawn Salam. Keith Rogers, the linebacker, making the stop. Colorado probably just going to give the ball to Salam a couple times here, try to get out from the shadow of their own goal post. Decent gain on first down as they get about three and a half, and... Gives him a little room, I guess, to throw the ball now. There you see the Sean's 
statistics, leads the nation in scoring, second in the nation in rushing yards. Hey, he was first in the nation until last week when Central Michigan's Brian Pruitt leaped over him. Pruitt with about a yard more per game than Salam right now. That was a gain of three, and now it's second and seven. Stewart on the option, and he has a first down, and he's at the 16-yard line. On the tackle, Brett McGraw, the freshman defensive lineman. Well, we didn't expect to see Colorado running a lot of option, but they're going to do it here. The reverse pivot is Cordell Stewart's going to keep the ball, and you saw the block by Derek West, number 72, on the middle linebacker, Jason Thorne. Thorne, a true freshman. When you get the middle linebacker on the ground, whether you're, whenever you're trying to go wide, whether it be option or just pitching the ball, you get that middle linebacker on the ground, you're usually going to have a pretty successful play. How about that number? 503 yards rushing coming into this game for Cordell Stewart. He is the Buffs' second-leading rusher. And here's the first leading rush. Oh, and he is met head on. That's Charles Davis. Yeah. Wow. I think Charles is a little jacked right now. Puts his helmet on Rashawn Salam, the second leading rusher in the nation. Well, watch uh, Salam. He does the little counter move, and he's just going to try to pick his hole. And he says, oh, there's a nice big hole. Oh, where'd that train come from? Great defensive backs hit like that they don't they don't slow down they don't flinch when they make a hit and Charles Davis didn't no gain on that play so it's third and se second and seven excuse me this is the tight end for you on the coverage was Kwame Lassiter Fourier picked up maybe a couple of yards now they they run the play action to Salam and he's got Keith Rogers right in his face but Cordell's able to get the ball away and nice pattern and nice catch by Christian Fourier who I think is probably underrated I mean a lot I know a lot of people around Colorado think he's a great player but I think around the nation he may be underrated I think he's got to be one of the best tight ends blocking wise and receiving wise in the nation he is the Buffs leading receiver with 28 catches coming in and it's a first down for CU Salam with room. First down yardage and more. He's at midfield and brought down at the Kansas 49-yard line. A gain of 23 yards. Here you see Rashawn just taking the handoff, and there's nobody containing him. He's just going right to the corner, and he gets around Charles Davis and right into the... the Defensive backfield for KU, and they got to have somebody who tur turns him in to the inside where they got some help. But you get Rashawn right to the corner and nobody in front of him. Boy, I mean, it's always going to be a long game. Eight thirty-five to go, first quarter. CU trying to add to its seven to nothing lead, and Cordell Stewart doesn't like what he sees on the other side of the ball, so he takes his first time out of the afternoon. And we're going to take a timeout also. We'll be right back. Well, now I'm told we're going to stay. <laughs> you know, you talk about the University of Kansas defense and the way that Colorado's been able to run the ball so far has been impressive. Col Kansas is a pretty good run defense, only giving up 150 yards a game. It's third in the Big Eight. But they are awfully small up front. Three out of their four defensive linemen up front are converted linebackers. One of them, Harold Harris, is a converted defensive back playing defensive end. So they're very, very small up front. Some of the scores from around the country will keep you updated throughout the game. A couple we expect to hear from a little later. 10th ranked Colorado State is home against Arkansas State. And Air Force, working on a six-game winning streak, plays 12th-ranked Utah. Cordell Stewart last week became the first quarterback in Big 8 history to go over the 6,000-yard mark in passing and 1,000-yard mark in rushing. Only the second guy to go 5,000, 1,000. Know who the other one was? Phil Little Bradley yeah, from right. Missouri, who went on to have a pretty good baseball career. First down for the Buffs at the Kansas 49. Cordell Stewart on the keeper gets a couple of yards. Tackle made by Harold Harris, a defensive end who weighs in at just 205 pounds. Yeah, that's a guy who started his career as defensive back. 
If they moved the outside linebacker, and then they moved him down to defensive end. They've done that with a number of players, including number 52, Steve Harvey, who also was their middle linebacker last year. Now he's playing defensive end. They had a lot of injuries in spring ball up front, and now Kansas just had to find guys to fill in there. They had a good defensive line a year ago with Chris Mamalonga. Second and eight, and penalty flags down. You talk about Mama Longa. There's some great football tradition here in Kansas. Dead ball, false start on the offensive line. Repeat second down, five yard penalty. Not many running backs in football history better than Gale Sayers. Uh -huh. He played here. John Hadle, I great quarterback yeah. in the AFL. Dana Stubblefield with the 49ers now. He was the. Uh, NFL Defensive Player of the Year last year. Well, you talk about... The rookie, I should yeah, say. Yeah, you talk about defensive line and how weak they are. They've had Mamalonga, and they had Stubblefield. They have a guy named Gilbert Brown who played here a year ago. is now playing in Green Bay. Kyle Moore, defensive end, now playing in Green Bay. They've had a great tradition of defensive linemen coming out of here just in the last couple of years. After the penalty, CU pushed back five yards, so it's second and 13. A quick out to Salam, a nice cutback, and he gets inside the 45 of Kansas. He's a couple or three yards short of the first down, however. Big Derek West was leading the way downfield, and I thought that he was probably about five or six yards downfield when this ball was thrown. Let's see if we can see it right here. Number 72, he's going to lead the way, but Salam makes the most of this as he cuts inside the middle linebacker, Thorin, and gets himself an extra six or seven yards. Underrated receiver, too, Rashawn Salon. Third and four, the Kansas crowd kicking the noise level up. Over the middle, tip, but caught by Westbrook. What a great reaction. Westbrook gathers it in, and he's inside the 25-yard line. <laughs> I think it's Jason Thorin, the middle linebacker. This ball goes right through his hands. Oh, look at that. He had it and just tipped both his thumbs, I think. He ends up making the tackle. Nice hustle by the true freshman, but Michael Westbrook gets the big game. And when you're a linebacker, you get the, if you get your hands on the ball and you don't catch it, I mean, you just kick yourself because it doesn't happen that often. And it's plays like that that'll make Michael Westbrook a first or second round draft pick in the NFL next year. So first down, Salam. He's hit quickly at the ankles by Kwame Lasseter, the free safety coming up to make the stop. Also, Keith Rogers in on the tackle. There you see Michael Westbrook heading back in, the all-time CU receiver and catches and about to be in yards, I believe, or if he hasn't already got them. Oh, you're right. He came in just 89 yards behind Charles Johnson. He also holds the CU record for touchdown receptions in a career. Second and 10 for CU. Salam again, no room. And he's hit maybe for a loss of a half yard. Jason Thorin did the hitting. Yeah, he's he's getting seeking revenge is Jason Thorin, the true freshman, coming up here and he's unblocked. Actually, you see, I think it's uh, Heath Irwin trying to block him. Diving at his ankles, but Thorin plays off the block and is able to make a nice stick on Rashawn Salam. If he lost a yard there, that's very rare. You know, in 239 yards, Rashawn Salam only has 14 yards in losses. That's pretty impressive. He's always falling forward. They actually gave him a yard on his progression there. So it's third and nine, and now he's going to get, oh, I thought he'd get into the end zone. But making the stop by the ankles is Harold Harris. I thought he was in. That was a true shoestring tackle. Watch the offensive line. The left guard, Chris Naoli, and Derek West, number 72, put the nice block on the middle linebacker. It just creates that little crease, and that's what makes Salam so good. He only needs a little crease. Hits that hole fast, and boom, he's into the defensive backfield. But Harris is able to come through, and he's just broken the single-season rushing record. Congratulations to Rashawn. Eric Bieniemy set that record in 1990 with 1,628 yards. Salam now three yards in front of Eric. And a first down on that play. So first and goal from the 10. There's a touchdown. Christian Fourier, what a great catch. 
Stewart put it the only place the defensive back couldn't get to it and Fourier with the outstretched arms gets the score. Boy, does he have soft hands for a guy that's 6'4", 240. Catches it away from his body. You see a lot of people catching it into their body, but Fourier had come in motion to the right. And everybody cleared out into the middle, leaving Fourier basically by himself. That ball took a long time to get there. It looks like Lasseter almost had a chance, but he was wide open. The extra point by Vascaricchian. You know, one of the things very impressive about that catch also, Jimmy, he had the presence of mind not just to come back across his body to make the catch, but to immediately look down at his feet to see if he yeah. was inbounds. Yeah. That's something that's just a feel. Christian Fourier, I think, is going to make a great pro tight end. Another man out of Northridge, California, a communications major. He's already graduated. He is taking a class or two so he can play football, but he graduated earlier this fall. Yeah, he's a guy that injects a lot of enthusiasm into his team, too. If you ever hear him speak, whenever he's interviewed, he's always got a lot of enthusiasm, a, a real personable guy, always got a smile, always upbeat, and I think that carries over to his teammates. Yeah, one of the things Christian wants to do when he's out of school is to uh, direct TV and movies. Yeah. Rick Neuheisel, the quarterback's coach for the CU Buffs. I wonder how long he's going to be here. What is it, man? 33 years old, everybody wants him to be a head coach. He hasn't even been a coordinator yet. Well, you know how that works. <laughs> Coaches are fired this time of the year. People put together these hot lists, and New Heisel is one of the hot names right now. And, and the, the reason is, is the way he's been able to coach Cordell Stewart. But he's not even the offensive coordinator for this team. And, and I'm not really saying he shouldn't be a head coach. I think he'll be a great head coach. But it's a little bit surprising to see the attention that he has drawn from different schools when he's only been here for a year and, and really only a position coach, not a, a coordinator. Those things kind of take on a life of their own. Yeah. He's mentioned at well, one place, then another, another school. Yeah, the other figures. schools are saying, well, why they, well, he must be good, so <laughs> we'll go right. after him, too. That's right. <laughs> Back to receive the kickoff from Voskerichi and our George White and a Shunde Smith. And the wind holds this one up again. The 18-yard line, that's a Sunday Smith, and he's across his own 35. Hey, he, he's returned a kick for a touchdown earlier this year, and KU and is the number one team in the Big 8 in returning kickoffs. That return went 20 yards. Let's take a look back at the end zone look at the touchdown, and Cordell gets great pressure. But look how long that ball is in the air. You see Lasser gets over there to lay a lick on Fourier, but I think you got an idea of how open he was. 13 plays, 97 yards. 621. Started at their own three-yard line. Yeah, earlier, we talked about how difficult it is for most teams to go 97 yards. For the Buffs, it's routine this year. Yeah. They've had quite a few drives like that. This is LT Levine. He's up to his own 40-yard line. Call it a gain of three. See, now, Kansas, Les, I think, wants to stay in this ball game. They got to continue to just run the ball like that. And it looked like kind of a nondescript play. That's about a four and a half yard game. And they're very capable of doing that if they just stay on the ground. Let's see what Glenn Mason decides to do. And, and that's what Bill McCartney talked about yesterday with us. That was his main concern. They can run the ball, which means they could probably stay close, stay in the game, and have a chance to win it at the end. Good pressure from Greg Jones. Preston gets it off, but there's no receiver anywhere near that ball. See, and I don't understand that. They got second and about five and a half, maybe six, and they're running the ball fairly well. I don't know why you put the ball in the hands of Ashiki Preston to try to throw it. He's not a, he's actually a pretty accurate thrower, but over the last four or five games, he's only been 45%. And he's got a real kind of funky throwing motion, if you, if you didn't notice it already. I, I wonder how much of it has to do with the fact, though, that he's always throwing on the run. Well, I don't know. He's, he's been under pressure quite a bit. On third and seven. Preston keeps it and gets the first down, and he's to midfield. Hey, that was a well-conceived play. I like that. And what you're going to see is June Henley, number 20. He's going to fake it to him, and then Henley's going to get the block on Matt Russell right there and turns Russell out, and that's why Ashiki Preston's able to get through. Alan Wilbon made the tackle on that play. Preston running the ball, averaging almost three yards a carry. A little better on that play. First and ten, this is Henley. He goes nowhere. 
First man to meet him is the nose tackle, Ryan Olson. One of the keys to this football game was whether Ryan Olson filling in for Kerry Hicks would be able to make plays. They probably were not going to double team him. If Hicks is in there, he's a guy who forces double teams from the guards. And Elliot, or uh, excuse me, Mike Hankwitz thought that uh, Olson would not be double teamed. And if he could get through and make plays, and right here he's not double teamed, he plays off the center and is able to make the play. And that's a key to this ball game to shutting down the KU running game. Olsen had a great game in place of the injured Hicks last week. He ended up with 12 tackles. And a sack. Second and 10. Preston going long. His man was about five yards out of bounds. But let's see what the call is. There's a flag down. On the coverage was T.J. Cunningham, but Chris Hudson also was over there. And and I have a feeling the flag might be on him. Yeah, I think that Hudson or Cunningham just pushed Harris right out of right out of bounds. Harris was, you're right, he was like four or five yards out of bounds, but he's still turning and looking for the pass as if he was going to catch it. He saw the track on the uh, outer perimeter of the field, and he, he thought, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try the 440 today and see what happens there. Pass interference. On the defense, spot foul, first down. Last thing Bill McCartney wants is a cheap Kansas score and let the Jayhawks back in this game. We've got 2.55 to go first quarter. The Buffs lead at 14 to nothing. Kansas in CU territory with a first down at the 39-yard line. This time, Kansas keeps it on the ground, gets about three yards. Darius Holland the stop. I think Darius Holland learned a little bit from the Nebraska game a couple weeks ago. They were able to influence block Darius Holland quite a bit, which means the tackles kind of start reaching on you, and, and the defensive tackle thinks that the play is going outside, and then they run the ball inside of you, and they don't really push you very hard. They kind of just finesse you and influence you. That time, Kansas tried to do the same thing, but he was smarter, came off the block, and made the play. Second and seven. This is Henley. And he gets a push inside the 30 down to the CU 29. Very close to the first down. Ted Johnson the stop. Looking in isolation of June Henley, the sophomore running back, takes the pitch but doesn't go wide, stays inside. And look at all the blockers that are locked up on CU defenders. And they're locked up about three or four yards on the CU side of the football. He made a great read on that play. Did you notice there was a little crease there? And then he saw Darius Holland jump into it, so he turned it a little more inside and got about another three yards out yeah. of the play. And that's what great running backs have is that vision. I actually had a, a chance to talk to Gail Sayers this week and asked him what made him and other running backs like him so great. Is it the vision that you have? He said, yeah, it's, it's great vision, but that is just God-given ability. See it and react. And the crowd just reacted to a first down. They brought the sticks out, and Henley did get enough. So Kansas with the ball at the CU 29-yard line. Kansas putting together an impressive drive right here. Henley again. He bounces it outside, and he got a few extra yards out of that, too. Call yeah, it a pickup of four, four and a half. Matt Russell with the stop. Yeah, that's all Henley. Watch this. This is closed off by Shannon Clavell and Phillips very well right there, but he's the one who's able to make the juke and then get a couple extra yards. Got about five yards out of something that looked like it was going to be no gain. Look at that juke. Look at that, how he changes directions on Mike Phillips. Charles Henley, Jr. They call him June for the junior. And it's second and six. Preston going to the end zone. He's got Smith. Touchdown. Five yards of Shiki Preston to a Shunday Smith and Kansas is on the board. We talked about Kansas not being able to throw downfield all that well, but he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage of Shunday Smith on Dalton Simmons, and Simmons locked up on him. Smith was able to kind of overcome 
the hand fighting by Simmons and break away for the easy score. A nice throw, an accurate throw by Ashiki Preston. Hey, Ashiki to a Sunday. <laughs> Has a certain ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> and this is McCord with the extra point. And that CU lead is now down to 14 to 7. We have a minute six to go, first quarter. Ashunde Smith, the junior out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. And you don't care about that. You just wanted to say Cucamonga. You're right. I was hoping all day he'd make at least one <laughs> catch so I could say the name of that city. Ashunde Smith and George White and their tight end Jim Moore were all tied for the lead in receptions for Kansas coming into this ball game with 15 apiece. They all had 15 a week ago, too. None of them caught a pass against Nebraska. But just as they come into this football game, Ashunde Smith comes up with not only a reception, but a touchdown. Big play for Kansas. That's his third touchdown on the year. A 63-yard drive culminating in the Ashunde Smith touchdown catch. Well, as Bill McCartney told us, he thought they were going to be in for a fight, and after going up 14-0, it looked like it might be easy, but Kansas puts together an impressive drive, and they answer Colorado. Oh, that might be the wake-up call to Buff Snead. Up 14-0, maybe they were getting a little too confident on the side. We'll see how they react as Kansas gets set to kick off. Bet you it's a touchback. Troutman and Henley. Henry, excuse me, the two freshmen back to receive the kickoff. Now, Ray Carruth is normally back there for the Buffs, but I would imagine after hurting his leg last week, he's not in the best of shape. He can play some wide receiver, but you take some hellacious hits when you're returning kickoffs, and I would guess Bill McCartney doesn't want to take a chance with Carruth back there. So Lendon Henry, the freshman, is taking his place on the kickoff return team. Henry on the right, Troutman on the left. Lendon Henry out of Port Arthur, Texas. He's six foot, 195. And because of the wind, Kansas has to have somebody hold the ball on the tee for McCord. Tie and it's right up the middle. Henry, one yard deep. And he's able to return that ball about 24 yards. It wasn't smooth, but it was effective. Yeah. Well, Lennon Henry had so many problems with the NCAA getting his eligibility all worked out. Finally got it worked out. Saw his first action of the season against Missouri. And now is getting some action returning kickoffs. Some other scores you saw Nebraska was up 7 to 3. Kansas State ranked 11, leading Missouri. Air Force down to Utah 7 to nothing. Florida and Notre Dame. Florida State and Notre Dame in a defensive battle, it looks like. With Florida State leading in the third. Right now, the Buffs with the ball at their own 22. It's first down. And Salam picks up four. And that would have been a lot more if Gerald McBurrows, the strong safety, didn't come up and make that play. Colorado had two of their big offensive linemen coming around the corner, and they just were unable to get McBurrows coming off the corner, and he snuck in behind those linemen and made the play. Or that Rashawn could still be running up Mount Oriad. That's an experienced kid, McBurrows. He's in his fourth year starting for Kansas. Started as a freshman. Second and seven. Salam again. He's hit hard at his own 29 by McBurrows once again. And now you see why McBurrows was voted the hardest hitter on the team by his teammates. I think Salam would agree with that right now. All right, that's the end of the first quarter with CU leading the Kansas Jayhawks 14 to 7. We'll be right back in Lawrence. Lillian had a difficult problem, an ovarian condition that was very painful. 
and extremely difficult to treat. I said to her, I wish I had a magic wand or something. Nothing seemed to work, except not giving up. We solved it. Lillian's fine, thank goodness. Then guess what she brought me? As a member of Kaiser Permanente, you can have a personal physician, one like Dr. Marianne Minor. Kaiser Permanente. Good people, good medicine. Samsonite's Adventure Series luggage is perfect for those active vacations. It's sporty, easy to carry, and like every Samsonite, quite durable. The Adventure Series. For all you can pack into a vacation. $2.59 a month. Hard proof that during Ford Truck Month, your Ford dealer is determined to give you the lowest lease rate available on the best-selling truck in the world. Ford F-150. Just $2.59 a month for a loaded 95 F-150 4x4. Plus, you'll get air conditioning, split bench seating, and a V8 engine at no extra charge. You'll find the best value around during Ford Truck Month. And with a $2.59 lease rate on a loaded F-150 4x4, your Ford dealer's got the hard proof to back it up. Great day for a barbecue or just lay out a blanket, have a little picnic up on the hill overlooking Memorial Stadium. That's what these folks are doing. And they've got a good ball game to watch. Colorado leading Kansas 14 to 7. We're about to start the second quarter. And CU has the ball at its own 28-yard line. It's third and four. Cordell complete. The receiver, Michael Westbrook, brought down by Dorian Brew. And they'll move the chains on that. That was a first down. Michael having a pretty good day. Heck, Michael having a pretty good year. <laughs> Leading the Big Eight in receiving yards with 71 a game. First quarter stats. Each team had the ball just twice. We've had a couple of long drives and a couple of successful drives. CU leading in most categories and leading on the scoreboard, 14 to 7. Right now, the Buffs at their own 41 with a first down. A lot of time for Cordell. Again, it's Westbrook. And he's down to the Kansas 43. You know, I talked to Bob Fellow, the defensive coordinator for Kansas and the one person he mentioned he was afraid it was going to hurt him was Michael Westbrook and here you see he just kind of finds a seam in the zone nothing special about the pattern just runs down about 10 or 11 yards turns around and puts his uh, hand up and says uh, hey Cordell I'm open see so you averaging 7.1 yards on first downs and that's through the whole year another first down for the buffs in Kansas territory now on the option, he immediately pitches to Salam, and he's down to the 39-yard line, a gain of four. Well, what Bob Fellow told me was that Kansas was going to try to do what Nebraska did, and Bill McCartney even said it last night. We're going to bring a lot of guys, eight, nine guys, up to the line of scrimmage and just dare Colorado to pass. And Nebraska did that. Colorado just did not execute in the passing game. And Bob Fellow said, hey, if, ex if they execute in the passing game against us, especially with Michael Westbrook, we could be in deep trouble. We don't have the corners and the speed on the outside to cover Westbrook like Nebraska did. So far on the day, three catches, 80 yards for Westbrook. This is Salam, another first down inside the 30. Dorian Brew the stop. Back to Westbrook for a second, Jim. I'm told he just needs nine more yards to break CU's all-time record for reception yardage in a year. Well, the things that are going to be there for Colorado today, the inside run, and boy, when you have a guy that can break tackles like that, you're going to be able to run the ball inside. The inside run and the downfield pass. So Westbrook and Salam having big days today. Yeah, you brought it up earlier. Salam doesn't have that great breakaway speed. He doesn't look dynamic when he's running. He's just durable and he's strong and he knows where the holes are. Mm -hmm. Salam again. Didn't see much of a hole, but still made something out of it. He's inside the 25. And the thing that Rashawn has is a tremendous offensive line. I mean, I think you cannot overstate what the offensive line for Colorado has been able to accomplish for Rashawn. A 
gain of five on that last play by Rashawn. So the Buffs have second and five right now. Cordell looking deep. Caruth, touchdown, see you. Twenty-four yards just like that. Boy, Cordell made a great throw here. Ray Carruth. That's his first catch to, uh, touchdown catch of the year, I believe. You see Cordell. He looked off to the left, and that brought the safety, Maurice Gaddy, that bought Carruth time to get into the seam, and then Cordell just threw a bullet for the touchdown. That's his second TD for Carruth for the year. Voskaritian puts it through the uprights, so the Buffs answer very quickly and go up 21-7. What is non-culpabilis? A fancy way of saying not guilty. What is a trial de novo? Oh, that's a new trial. Do you know the easiest way to make a U.S. West in-state long-distance call? Uh, no. Well, you can't be an expert at everything. With U.S. West, just dial one plus the number. And with the right calling connection plan from the small business group, your calls may be even less expensive. It's that easy, because you know law, and we know phones. The small business group at U.S. West. There's a reason why Kaufman's Tall and Big Men Chop stands above our competition. We dress you in style. First in style, selection, and service. Kaufman's the style leader. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer for The Money Store. Does it seem like the weekend is the only time to take care of personal business? The problem is, is that when you're off, just about everyone else is too. But not at The Money Store. If you're thinking about refinancing your home, you can call The Money Store this weekend and apply by phone. There's no application fee, and the chances are you'll have an approval by Tuesday. So if you want to refinance your home, call The Money Store this weekend at 1-800-LOAN-YES. That's 1-800-LOAN-YES. CU Buffs football on News 4 is brought to you by Coors Original, by your Denver Front Range Dodge dealers, by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado, by Midas, by First Federal Bank, and by Blackjack Pizza. Ray Carruth, the sophomore out of Sacramento, just made the touchdown grab from Cordell Stewart. And the Buffs go up 21-7. Getting ready to kick off in Lawrence, Kansas. We have 12.33 to go, second quarter. Bruce came into the game with a bruised thigh. Wasn't sure how much he'd play, but didn't look like he had a bruised thigh on that last one. Voskaritian with the wind at his back. This is taken by Ashunde Smith from his own goal line. And he gets it up to the 19. A lot of stuff blowing around on that field, Jimmy. A lot of paper, a lot of leaves. So you can imagine what's going on when you're facing that wind in any drive. It's going to be hard to go up top. Taking a replay of Cordell Stewart to Ray Carruth and the 25-yard touchdown pass, 24-yard touchdown pass. Cordell did a great job of looking off the free safety. He does the play-action pass and looks to the right and then comes back to the left to find Carruth. On first down, Preston. Oh, the pass is dropped by the fullback, Chris Powell. Chris, you don't get to handle the ball that much, big guy. <laughs> He's their starting fullback, has only four carries all year, only one reception. The one reception was for a touchdown, but anytime he gets his hands on the ball, he's got to catch it. Let's go down to the field now. Mark McIntosh has something for us. Thank you very much, Les. You might be able to see Greg Jones on the front of his jersey has 36. That is in honor of teammate John Knutson. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Back up to you guys. On second and ten. Preston, this time complete. They went right back to Powell. He holds on this time. Mark, you want to continue that thought? Yeah, thank you, Les. It's in honor of John Knutson, the senior linebacker from Montana. This week, sadly, John Knutson's father, Don Knutson, died in a private plane crash up in Montana. John Knutson is not with his teammates here today. 
He is back in Montana with his family. We want to send our condolences to John and his family, the tragic loss of his father. But that's why you see number 36 on the jersey of several CU Buffs today. Back up to you guys. And Jimmy and I second that emotion for the Knutson family, certainly. Third and five for Kansas. Preston decides to run it. Caught from behind by Jones. However, he does have first down yardage. Or I should say he's very it's close. close. Yeah, yeah, I don't like know if he has, has it. And they, they, they do give it to him. We'll see a Sheiky Preston. He's going to get pressure from the outside. There's Mike Phillips. Jones comes off of his block and is able to catch Preston from behind. And Preston has a little bit of a bad wheel. And they're saying he's not. Uh, his running ability has been diminished over the last few weeks because of a leg injury. That must be the worst feeling you can have on a football field. Standing in the pocket, you know you're taking a little too much time, and it's about that time to take off running <laughs> with these big studs coming after you. I, I can't imagine it's real fun. <laughs> this is Levine on the pitch. Doesn't get much, maybe a yard. Darius Holland made the tackle. There's Darius. He's had a tremendous career here. Just one sack so far this year, but has really been a great run defender. Changed his number. He used to wear number 92 early in his career. Changed it to number three because his idol is Joel Steed. Now playing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. There you go. Pittsburgh seems to be a, a nice safe haven for XCU buff players. Yeah. I think they have five on their roster. On second and nine, Preston complete. This is Henley, stopped about three yards short of the first down by Ted Johnson. And I'm not sure which CU buff that is. It, it was the tackler to Henley, and it is Simmons, Dalton Simmons. He and Henley met face to face. And we'll take a look at it here as Henley's going to take in the reception. And right there, Dalton Simmons puts his head right on the shoulder of June Henley. Don't want to speculate as to what kind of injury he might have, but he fell to the ground quickly. You know, football players that, well, you know, of course, spend so much time working on those neck muscles mm -hmm. because of situations like this, yet you're still vulnerable when you get hit like that. Yeah, you are. And that's the scariest injury you can have, and especially if you have a, a burner or a stinger that they call very painful. All right, we'll take a break. with we'll see you leading 21-7. The dog eats his dinner from an old tin pan. Jake drinks his Coors from a cold yellow can. The two hooked up in Boulder one purple night wasn't part of the plan. It just worked out right. They've been coming up here on Wednesdays for years. Just a guy, a dog, and a couple of beers. See, Jake does what he wants. And for that, he's proud. Never worries much about pleasing the crowd. He'll tell you. If you do what you like, you'll like what you do. For Jake, it's an old friend and the right kind of brew. Cold, clean, original chords. Because you feel like it. Overall, it's the most powerful line of trucks on the planet. A line of trucks built by people who look at things a little differently. From the company that puts an airbag in every single one. A line of trucks that from one end to the other simply refuses to follow the rules. At America's truck stop, the new Dodge. They're working on Dalton Simmons. You wonder if he didn't get a stinger or a burner. You know, the pinched nerve that kind of goes all the way down your arm into your hand. Very painful. Preston complete to Smith on third and three. He has the first down, the stop made by Chris Hudson. Hey, Preston's not bad. That bad, he's been pretty impressive so far today. He's always been an accurate passer. As we talked about, kind of a funky motion, but he gets the ball delivered accurately, as you see in that case, to Smith. 
under the 10 minute mark in the first half. And a first down for Kansas at its own 46. They try the middle, get a couple yards out of it. Costello good on the carry. In the ballgame now for CU at nose tackle, you see is uh, Mau Mau, Liliami Mau Mau. He actually took the place of Kerry Hicks a week ago, but had a slightly sprained ankle when Ryan Olson got into the football game. He did so well, they just left him in there. But Mau Mau recovered to play today. Second and seven. Preston buying time for himself. And runs it out of bounds at about midfield. Squeezed a yard out of that play. There are penalty flags down. Oh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's holding. <laughs> You've always been one to take big chances, well, right? They don't call me Mr. Vegas for nothing, you know? <laughs> And what we're going to see is number 67. That's Derek Brown. He's just going to tackle. I think it's Clavel. Shannon Clavel coming in from the left side. And Derek Brown is starting in the place of Scott Whitaker, who is actually starting in the place of Mark Allison. So that's really the third team right tackle for the Kansas Jayhawks. And he can't handle Sh uh, Shannon Clavel. And Kansas right now looking at second and 20. Play action from behind. The ball is loose. Kansas recovers it. That's the guard, Hesley Hempstead, who grabbed it out of the air. <laughs> but boy, was Preston hit hard. And I believe it was Shannon Clavel. Well, we're going to see the, and it's going to be Greg Jones coming from the blind side, and Preston can't find it. That ball just pops up in the air. And how did Hempstead know that ball was there? He's supposed to be blocking. He's supposed to have his back to Preston. But he turns around, finds the ball. It actually showed a little speed there, didn't he? Big guy, 6'1", 295 pounds. Speaking of speed, boy, Greg Jones has got it. You know, he came in 6'4", 200 pounds, and in two years he's gained another 30, 32 pounds, yet retained that great speed he had all through high school. Third and 29 now. Kansas plays it safe. This is Henley. They basically gave up on this drive, and they're going to end up punting. And they're hearing it from the crowd, too. The crowd doesn't like that they gave up. Another tackle by Greg Jones. Henley really had nowhere to go. Nice play by Matt Russell to really slow down the play, and then Greg Jones was able to clean up. You're looking at the possibility of very good field position for CU because Simmons comes into the game to punt the ball, and he's punting into a pretty good win. Chris Hudson for the Buffs to return it. He's sitting back at about his own 37. I don't think he should be back that far. Oh, that's not too bad by Simmons. Hudson, a fair catch at his fair own 39. Could have been a lot worse for Kansas. Instead, the Buffs will start with it in their own territory. Sitting on a 21-7 lead, and we have 7.33 to go, second quarter. Saying it doesn't matter what doctor you see is like saying it doesn't matter what club you use. <laughs> it matters. To have a choice of doctors, choose HMO Colorado. I don't care if it's an HMO, PPO, or UFO. As long as I can see my doctor. To have a choice of doctors, choose HMO Colorado. The only HMO from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado. Good choice. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over two million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. 
on Renegade. A big portion of his business is black market steroids. Reno muscles in on a pumped up pusher. Might have found us a new customer today. I don't like strangers asking about party favors. But when he gets a killer workout. Anabolic steroids can be hazardous to your health, so let's just say we forget the whole subject. Will he feel the burn? Why don't you lighten up, man? Why don't you mind your own business? It's against my nature. Don't miss Renegade. Tonight at 8 on Denver's TV 20. Seven thirty-three to go, second quarter. Les Shapiro and Jim Ryan with you in Lawrence, Kansas, at Memorial Stadium. Look on the day, Rashawn Salam, ninety-one yards rushing, almost double what Kansas has on the ground. That was Cordell Stewart keeping it on the ground. He squeezes a yard out of that play. And you know what's amazing about Cordell Stewart is that he's averaging, I want to say, like four point nine yards per carry. And that's despite the fact that he's got 173 yards in losses because they count the sacks in college football against the rushing yardage of an individual. So Stewart, who has to have his sacks counted against him, still averaging 4.9 yards every time he carries the football. That's pretty impressive. Second and 10. No gain on that last carry by Stewart. This is Salah. He's thrown for a one-yard loss by Steve Harvey. Harvey's been quiet up until today. You're going to see it at ground level. He's going to come from the back side. They're trying to pull the off guard and off tackle and get Salon to the left side. Harvey comes er, from the Kansas left side. See you right side from the back side. You have to be able to cut those backside players off. They weren't able to do it. Harvey makes the big hit, and Salon has taken a couple big hits today. Third and 11. Over the middle, wide open, Westbrook. And he's inside the Kansas 45. Another first down for the Buffs. Westbrook's just able to find the openings in the zone today. And you see Cordell will look to the right and then come back to the left. And he's wide open. You're right. The safeties had kind of split and gone in opposite directions. Both of them were outside the hash marks. And, Cord and uh, Michael's just able to come across the middle and make the catch. Boy, how can you not know where Michael Westbrook is? Good question. <laughs> Just an All-American candidate. First down for CU. He's got him again. It's for Westbrook. Just a bit overthrown by Stewart. You're going to see these two teams not afraid to put it up in the air deep when they're going from right to left on your screen. That's with the win. You won't see it, probably not at least, going the other way. No. That wind is pretty strong, and it's a factor in the football game. And that time, maybe it was a factor in having Cordell Stewart actually overthrow Michael Westbrook. Brings up second and 10. 5.51 to go, second quarter. Salam. Hit quickly by Thorne. Rashawn does get it to the 39-yard line. Call it a gain of five. see Kansas making a lot more substitutions than they usually do. They don't play much nickel coverage, but it looks like they're in a nickel package right now. Meaning five defensive backs. Yeah. And for some reason, they say Glenn Mason does not like to play it. Uh -uh. It doesn't matter who he's going against, whether it's a passing team or not. He just doesn't like playing five defensive backs. He wants to stop the run first, and they do a good job stopping the run right there. Salam brought down at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth and five. And CU brings out the punting unit. <laughs> Hail to Kansas. Tackle made by Brett McGraw. He's the true freshman who is a rodeo calf roper during his downtime when he's not playing football. They say he is a, a true-to-life cowboy. Andy Mitchell, a true-to-life buffalo, getting ready to punt. 39 yards is his average. And he's punting to a very dangerous man. Dorian Brew is number two in the nation, averaging 16 yards per punt return. He won't return this one, though. Andy Mitchell's punt goes out of bounds, out of bounds. at the 10-yard line. All right, let's go down to the field right now and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Les. At halftime of the ball game this afternoon, we're going to talk to an interesting couple. 
you might be able to see Bob and Dottie West. They're the parents of Derek West, the right offensive tackle for the CU Buffs. Derek West is a senior from Pomona High School. And Bob and Dottie have traveled all over the country the past four years watching their son play football. We're going to talk about the wandering West at halftime <laughs> with Bob and Dottie. Back up to you guys. All right, Kansas with the ball at its own 10-yard line. There's a new quarterback in the game now for Kansas. It's Mark Williams. We haven't gotten any word on whether or not Ashiki Preston is hurt, but every once in a while, we're told, Kansas uh, replaces Preston just to mix things up a little, throw the defense off kilter. And they're running the football here, but the one thing that Williams brings to the table is a much stronger arm. They say Williams probably going to be, uh, well, I don't know, quarterback of the future. He's a junior already, but may take over the starting position next year. Nine-yard pickup on that last running play. This is Levine pushing for the first down. I think he's got it. Let's go back down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, Les. You guys talking about Mark Williams, uh, talking to some of the Kansas personnel earlier in the ballgame. Mark Williams is a junior college transfer. They were planning on him being the quarterback of the future the next two years, but earlier in the year when Ashiki Preston got hurt, they were forced to play Mark Williams, thus burning a year of eligibility. So they're kind of stuck in a situation where their quarterback of the future really only has one more year left next year being Williams' sen senior season. Back up to you guys. So the future is still there. It's just not going it's to be only, as lengthy. Yeah, it's <laughs> only one year. First down for Kansas at its own 21. Williams, the quick slant, complete to Rodney Harris. Dalton Simmons makes the tackle. Harris is a couple yards short of the first down. I think Williams got the start against University of Alabama Birmingham earlier in this year when Preston was out and he went, uh, or so far in the year, 14 for 21, 233 yards. He's got a touchdown, no interceptions. And there you see the numbers on Rodney Harris, who caught that short nine-yarder. Second and two. Clock winding down, less than 2.40 to go, second quarter. This is Levine. He's hit quickly by Ted Johnson. The only buff who wasn't fooled on the misdirection play. Very close to the first down. Looked like they might be about a half yard short. That'll bring up third. Oh, no, they give it to him. They give him the spot. So it is a first down. Two twenty-five to go, second quarter. Buffs leading twenty-one to seven. CU came in ranked seventh in the country, same ranking as last week. This is Henley. He goes nowhere. In fact, he lost a yard. Dalton Simmons, the tackle. Well, we saw Dalton Simmons down on the ground a little bit earlier in this quarter. And the report is that he did have a stinger or pinched nerve, we used to call him, that just gives you a really numb and painful sensation from your shoulder all the way down into your hand. I've had several of them, I have to tell you, they are painful. But they don't last too long, often, in this, as in this case, you see Simmons back in the football game already. Second and 11 for Kansas. Williams getting a good rush on him. Mike Phillips is finally the one who makes the sack. And that means Phillips now has two and a half sacks on the year. Really, who made that play? Inside linebacker, Matt Russell, number 16. He's going to come through the middle right there, and he's going to miss Williams, but causes Williams to just pull the football down and say, I got nowhere to go, but try to run. And Phillips cleans up. Oh, look at this. CU has taken a timeout. They want to get that ball back one more time before the half ends and make Kansas punt into the wind. They have to punt into the wind, and then they'll get the ball back with the wind. So smart timeout by Bill McCartney with a less than a minute and a half because it's now third and about 20 yards to go. So you expect that you'll be able to hold them defensively here, get the ball back in great field position. 
Well, when this telecast started, we talked about the fine rushing units both these teams have. Look at that. Look at the bottom line. Rashawn Salam has 1,564 yards coming into this game. He's over the 1,600 mark now. And Kansas as a team, even they're though five, they're, they're five tailbacks. Right. Even though they're a pretty good rushing team, one of the best in the nation, they still only have a few more yards than Rashawn does by his lonesome. And there is Mr. Salam. Everybody in Boulder in the Denver metro area wondering if this young man's going to stay in school and use up his last year of eligibility next year or turn pro like so many have in the past, like Lamont Warren did last year for the Buffs, leaving after his junior year. Third and 16. Williams throwing off balance, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Henley, and now Kansas does have to punt into that win with a minute 20 to go. Colorado's been able to put a lot of pressure on the KU quarterbacks, and you have to also credit the defensive backfield for the CU Buffs because their quarterbacks for KU cannot find anybody open. They're just playing some pretty simple coverages, but the receivers for KU finding it unavailable to get open. This is Darren Simmons to punt. And Chris Hudson for the Buffs is back at his own 39. A low kick. It's going to take a bounce. And it's going to take a bounce in CU's favor. And finally downed and out of bounds by Kansas at the Kansas 49. So the Buffs with a minute 14 to go have some time left to do some damage. A 24-yard punt into the wind. Colorado 6 for 6 went in the two-minute drill this season, including... The Hail Mary against Michigan. Uh, actually, two of their drives against Michigan might have been considered in that two-minute period. Had the, the score against Texas to win the football game with a field goal. They've not missed in the two-minute drill so far this year, and we'll see with 114 left that they can put points on the board again. That tells you what kind of athletes CU has on offense. When they have to do it, they do it. Plain and simple. Oh, Stewart almost throws an interception. In and out of the hands of Dorian Brew. He is kicking himself right now. <laughs> Colorado goes with nobody in the backfield. And what you're going to see is number 39, Don Davis, with great coverage on Westbrook right there. So that's why Cordell was trying to throw it way out to the outstretched arms of Westbrook, away from the defender, but overthrew him and almost into the hands of that man, Dorian Brew. That brings up second and 10 from the Kansas 49. A lot of time for Stewart. He throws it as he's going down, and Salam makes the catch. Gained a couple of yards on that play. Keith Rogers, the linebacker on the coverage, made the stop. The athleticism of Cordell Stewart able to buy him some extra time, avoiding the rush, but uh, not a big gain. 58 seconds to go in the half. Each team has one timeout left. They, they actually had time, Jim, to, to run the ball a couple of times and get some first down yardage that way. I don't disagree with you. When you had the uh, incompletion on first down, that puts you in a tough position. And now with third and about eight and a half, they're definitely going to have to put the ball up. Cordell will run it. He has the first down and out of bounds. He stops the clock at the Kansas 36-yard line. Wow. They had three receivers out to the right side. Everybody covering those receivers. And Cordell, with that pump fake, is what bought him the extra time. He saw that he had a lot of running room, but he pump faked it in order to keep the defenders back there where he could then just sprint for the first down. Without the fake, he might not have been able to get that first down. And he did with a gain of 11. 50 seconds to go, second quarter. Just over the outstretched hands of the tight end, Desmond Dennis. Gerald McBurrow's on the coverage there. There was a little separation there, Jimmy, between Dennis and the coverage, but Cordell with that big win behind him. Had a little bit of trouble laying it in. Yeah, tough to gauge that win when you're trying to be really perfect in laying the ball in 
over a defender. And that time he just had a little too much on him. Second and ten. Design quarterback draw. Stewart inside the 20. Well in the field goal range for Vasco Ritchie. And Charles Davis finally makes the tackle. The clock does continue to run. 41 seconds left. That was a well-designed play, and you're right. Quarterback draw from the beginning, and the defenders are all covering people downfield. They had their back to the quarterback, and that's what makes the quarterback draw so effective is you get into the secondary, they don't even know he's running the football. Complete to James Kidd, and he's hit quickly by Kwame Lassiter inside the 15. Remember, the Buffs have one timeout left. They're going to use it for the field goal team. No, nope, they're going to use it now. No, they're not. Let's see if Cordell just plants no, the ball into the ground here. No, he's looking for the end zone. And he was looking for Kidd incomplete. That stops the clock with 12 seconds to go. I thought he might take the snap and just dump it into the ground to stop the clock, but they had time to get off another play or two. Yeah, with 12 seconds, now you do have another, another play. It is third down and about four. So plenty of time to run a play, and even if you don't get in the end zone, you do have your final timeout left. So pretty good clock management by not taking the timeout that last play. Phil Savoy comes into the game at receiver. He's the freshman redshirt out of Washington, D.C. There's your situation. Buffs leading 21 to 7, 12 seconds to go in the half. It's third and three. Wide open, but dropped by Westbrook. He's holding his hand as if he got it jammed by the football. He's open right away. Watch. He's going to start calling for the ball right here. I says, I'm wide open. I'm wide open. And I don't know if number 11, that's Charles Davis, got a hand on that or not. But the ball hits Michael right in the shoulder pads. And Cordell can't believe the ball was dropped. But, yes, it might have been tipped. And Michael might have hurt his hand there also. It's possible that ball was tipped and, and redirected just ever so slightly, and that's why Michael was not able to get his hands in proper position to catch the ball, and he might have a dislocated finger. And it's always fun to see them pulled back in place. Yeah, it? I'm glad that, oh, I don't know if I want to watch this. If, if they're going <laughs> to pull the finger out and pop it back in. Do you have a weak stomach, Les? <laughs> I have this thing about not wanting to watch body parts pulled out of their sockets. So, so did you watch <laughs> Rocky when, when he wanted his manager to cut him in the eyes? Uh, yeah. Cut me, Mick. Cut me, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> well, the field goal unit out for CU now, Neil Voskaritschian, will be staring at a, about a 29-yard field goal. By the way, Voskaritschian and Tennyson McCarty this week named to the uh, all big eight all academic team first team this should be automatic for him he is uh, perfect inside of 40 yards on the year and it is a 28 yard field goal attempt and it is good so with three seconds to go in the half the buffs get back on the board and now leave kansas 24 to 7. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC-TV and the National Broadcasting Company. Any reproduction of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC-TV is prohibited. Bill McCartney talking to Oscar Ritchie now about the ensuing kickoff, and what do you think he's telling him, Jim? He's probably, well, they got the win with him. He's, it's very possible that he could kick it out of the end zone, but I doubt they'll give him that chance to to return it. Ka Kansas is the number one return team, kickoff return team, in the Big 8. And they have one returned already for a touchdown this year. Shunday Smith did it. So I doubt they're going to give him that opportunity. I would imagine they're just going to punch the ball, kick it along the ground, and hope that a lineman picks it up and just make the play. I'm a little surprised, and maybe it's because he's been injured so much, but I'm a little surprised that Kansas hasn't been using June Henley to return kickoffs today. You might remember last year, if you watched the Kansas CU game, Henley returned one 100 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> CU goes for the onside kick. All they wanted was Kansas to fall on it. 
And the Jayhawks do with one second to go in the half. That, that was a pooch in every sense of the word. This gives Kansas one play to go into the end zone if they choose to do so. The uh, Hail Mary, and we're all very familiar with that play well, this year. Well, we're familiar with it. I don't know if they're going to try to run it against the wind. From the 43-yard line, the quarterback would probably be throwing it. Williams, I guess, from about the uh, 35 or so, and just to get it to the goal line. He'd need some 65 yards in the air against the wind. Doubt that it would happen. It's not Williams. It's going to be Preston, the quarterback. And, and right now, CU has four defensive backs back at their own 20 to 30 yard line. Kansas wanted to throw, but Preston ended up getting sacked. And that will end the first half with CU leading Kansas 24 to 7. had to be you. It invented the standards for how a minivan should ride and drive. It exceeds 1998 car safety standards. It gives you more choices than any other minivan. Dodge Caravan, the best-selling minivan of all time. Millions of people wouldn't know what to do without it, but they sure know what to do with it. It had to be you, a wonderful you. It had to be you. At Blackjack Pizza, we deliver more than just great pizza. We deliver a promise. A promise that your pizza is made with the freshest ingredients and the best tasting sauce, all at the best price around. And we deliver Blackjack Pizza. No gimmicks, just great pizza. Call today and order the Blackjack Family Pack. We'll deliver two large, two topping pizzas, four salads, and four drinks for the value-packed price of $15.99. Call Blackjack now. is a Colorado National Bank customer, not just because they gave him his first checking account, or the car loan that he wanted, or the school loan that he needed. Jim's a Colorado National customer because they gave his dad the business loan he needed to grow the company and hire the right talent to make it prosper. Time in Lawrence, Kansas. CU leading the Kansas Jayhawks 24 to 7. And right before the half ended, CU wide receiver Michael Westbrook got hurt. Let's go down to the field now and Mark McIntosh, and he'll tell us how Michael's doing. Thank you very much, Les. What happened to Michael Westbrook? He has a dislocation of that finger, and then the bone pierced through the skin. So what they're going to have to do in the locker room right now is one, snap the bone back in place in the finger, and then stitch up his finger. Very similar to what Charles Johnson had happened to him last year down in Oklahoma. Now with the Buffs ahead 24 to 7, don't know for sure whether or not we will see Michael Westbrook in the second half. Back up to you. Mark, you told me much more than I ever wanted to know, but thank you anyway. We'll take another break. We'll come back and talk about halftime festivities here in Lawrence. <laughs> I buy my own health insurance. It's my money from my own pocket. I don't want to spend more than I have to. Call 1-800-362-BLUE. I don't get sick. I hardly ever go to the doctor. Why should I spend a lot of money on health insurance? If you're in good health, we can save you money on health insurance. Call Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado. 1-800-362-BLUE. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over 2 million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. Colorado's early miners didn't have time to wait for committees to make decisions when they needed a loan, so they turned to what is now First Federal Bank. Well, I'm Pete Smythe, and today First Federal consumer loan customers still count on low rates and fees and a quick decision right in the local branch. And with 20 Colorado branches, you're never far from the money you need. So for home improvement, a new car, or for any good purpose, stop into the First Federal branch nearest you. Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. Thank you. 
From great peaks that inspire performance to country roads that lead to stardom. From sweeping sands on the Atlantic shore to great straight pathways blazing through the heartland. From the mountains to the sea, there's Conoco. With thousands of stations across America, gasolines and motor oils of exceptional quality, and the spirit of hospitality so many have come to count on. It's no wonder Conoco is the hottest brand going. You're watching KTVD, Denver's TV 20. See you leading Kansas at the half, 24 to 7. Les Shapiro and Jim Ryan with you. And Jimmy, we talked before the game started about CU's emotional level. They seem to come out okay. But I think a stronger indication might have been after Kansas came back to score its only touchdown of the half, CU came right back at them. Yeah, they were able to answer as soon as uh, Kansas got into the end zone. And I think that the theme for this game for Colorado, for especially for the seniors, they got together after the Oklahoma State game and said, let's just get back to having fun. There's a lot of pressure off from the loss to Nebraska and the, all the hype about being number one. Let's just get back to having fun. I guarantee you they're having fun today. You could just tell that they're really enjoying, say for Michael Westbrook and his dislocated finger, but the rest of the team at least is enjoying this football game so far. With a little prodding from head coach Bill McCartney, who talked to the seniors individually this week and said, hey, don't get blindsided. We still have a chance to have a great season, a 10-1 season, a New Year's Day game. Yeah. Don't let it down now. Anytime you're playing against a team that can run the football, stop the run, and has a great turnover margin, which Kansas has, you worry about a team like that, but so far, CU handling them pretty well. All right, we'll come back at halftime. We'll show you some scores and some highlights from Lawrence. Hey, football fans, it's the video coupon. Call Pizza Hut now during the Wade Phillips Show and order your Meat Lover's Pizza. A medium Meat Lover's Pizza loaded with six delicious meat toppings, only $8.99. And a second medium pizza, just five bucks. Call now during Wade, because when it's over, so is this offer. Denver's talking about Mile High Greyhound Park. It was fantastic. Clean, big, beautiful. We'll be back. I didn't know how to bet, but their new digital video race analyzer really helped. I won a few bucks. The Greyhounds are incredible to watch. The kids loved it. We had a wonderful meal, and the restaurant was, was truly luxurious. Talk about a good time. Enjoy live racing now at Mile High Greyhound Park, 62nd and Colorado Boulevard. It's the talk of the town. Well, the battery's good, and the start's brand new, so I figure it's got to be the alternator, right? I go into the auto zone, get a new one. And this guy says, well, let's check the old one first. No sense buying something you may not need. Well, turns out it's a voltage regulator. <laughs> I tell you, I could have spent a lot of time swapping out parts until I got it right. But with AutoZone, piece of cake. Ed Green here with the best way to ski and save at Keystone, Breckenridge, and A Basin. Just sign up for the free Ski 3 card, sponsored by Total and News 4. With the Ski 3 card, you'll get the lowest lift ticket prices every day at Keystone, Breckenridge, and A Basin. And it's free. Just register at any participating Total. While you're there, find out how to purchase the Ski 3 Express Pass. It lets you go straight to the lifts and get free ski days. The free Ski 3 card and the new Ski 3 Express Pass. Brought to you by News 4, 96.5 The Peak, and Total. Well, author Horace Greeley once said, go west, young man. But in a, the case of one couple from CU, the phrase might be, go with the west's young man. <laughs> Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh for that story. Mark? Les, thank you very much. I'm here with Bob and Dottie West, parents of senior offensive tackle Derek West. And for the past four years, they have been going to almost every road game the CU Buffs have had. We were talking 24 road games the past four years. They've been to 21. Now, I got to know. How many miles have you all put on the car? 25,000 miles. This trip put us over 25,000. The best road trip? Um, last year we drove from Baylor to Minnesota and we had a lot of fun. We called it our cross-country vacation. The worst? Probably going to Lincoln two years ago in the rotten weather and everything and the results of the game. We didn't want to stop. We were afraid we'd run into Nebraska fans and we couldn't face them. Tell me about the first road trip and the radar detector. <laughs> we thought we'd buy a radar detector, and we put it up in the car the next morning, and we put it up backwards, and it went off just in time to tell us we were going to get a ticket. For anybody that wants to speed, buy a radar detector. It'll tell you when you are going to get a ticket. <laughs> the car ever broken down? Never. No. We've really had good luck. We put 
25,000 miles out of the 45,000 miles on this car, and it's uh, been super for us. Now, Derek's a senior. He's only got one more ball game. It's in Boulder, but we understand you have now adopted Matt Russell, so you'll be going to more and more ball games in the future. That's right. It's now Matt Russell West. We had, we had to adopt him so we can make sure we keep getting tickets and being able to go to all the games. Well, congratulations to both of you. You have a wonderful son. You've been wonderful supporters of CU Athletics, and uh, best of luck the final two games. Thank you. Can I say one thing? Sure. I'd like to say um, to John Knudsen and his mother and his entire family that our love and our thought and our prayers are with you. Um, we'll see you when you get back home. Okay. Thank you very much, Dottie. Bob, thank you very much. They're going to still be supportive of CU Athletics despite Derek is a senior. And Derek wanted us to remind everybody that Bob has got a lot of speeding tickets the last four years. Back up to you guys. Yeah, but they will, were well worth it, weren't they? Watching their son play four years for the CU Buffs. All right, we'll take a break. Come back to Lawrence. the light clear the air carpool at work last year it happened to 24 everyday ordinary people which means there's a good chance 24 everyday ordinary people will win the lotto jackpot this year and 24 next year and the year after that Five years from now, there might be over 120 new lotto millionaires. So when you look at it that way, maybe you don't have to be that lucky to win lotto after all. I like these calm little moments before the storm. A ruthless cop who crossed the line. An innocent girl who escaped the hit. Find it. A professional assassin. Help me, I'll die tonight. Who's about to change the odds. Bring me everyone. Everyone! The Professional, rated R, at theaters Friday. In Denver, you look up and say, there's the Big Dipper and United Airlines. You see the moon and United. Every time you look up, there's United. With over 700 flights in and out, more than all other airlines combined. More United flights than stars? Some nights, yes. United, we'll move mountains for you. Come fly our friendly skies. There's your halftime score. The seventh-ranked CU Buffaloes leading the Kansas Jayhawks 24-7. You know, we've heard coaches say it time and again, football is a game of basics. It's blocking and it's tackling. Well, basics can apply to a lot of things, including health and science. CU's Dirk Martin reports on how CU health researchers are using basic science to help make life better for all of us. Running is a popular exercise, but it also punishes the human body. Well, mainly I went away from running because I had knee injuries or knee problems. <laughs> And I came to this because I can kind of control that myself. And, you know, if my knee's bothering me, I can do less power. Or if it's not, I can do more power. And I used to pull hamstrings and calf muscles and things a lot in running. Not, not one single injury since 1971 in race walking. Every two minutes, we're going to increase the grade until you can't continue anymore. What Bob Carlson and Wendy Himes learned from experience, CU Boulder kinesiology professor Bill Burns proved in a study comparing running with step aerobics and race walking. I found that the three activities produced the same increase in aerobic gains, that is their aerobic fitness level, but they did differ in the incidence and severity of injury that, was, uh, that resulted. With running producing the greatest incidence and the greatest severity of injury, Bill Burns doesn't want to discourage anyone from running, but what he does suggest is that if you are going to run, then maybe incorporate one of these two exercises into your program. That's what study participant Heather Silverman did. Well, I'd never been exposed to race walking before, or really stepping, and so 
I've actually incorporated those into some of my cross-training type things. While Bill Burns is working to keep people on their feet longer, a research project at the CU Health Sciences Center is giving babies the breath of life. Well, I guess this baby came in just a few days ago. Um, looks like he has pretty uh, hypo-inflated lungs here. CU Health Sciences Center doctors Stephen Abman and John Kinsella treat infants with pulmonary hypertension, a very deadly respiratory problem where blood vessels in the newborn's lungs spasm shut, cutting off life-giving oxygen. Without the relaxation, oxygenation can't occur, and these babies can die from progressive heart and lung failure. Current treatment is costly and potentially dangerous. A heart-lung machine is needed until the baby's lungs work on their own. But last year, Abman and Kinsella heard about a study that identified nitric oxide as the chemical the body produces to help dilate blood vessels. The two launched a controlled study mixing nitric oxide with oxygen. The results have been astounding. Some babies respond completely in as little as 24 hours. We took it into the clinical setting and started using it as part of the ventilator therapy to treat these newborns. Uh, in our first cases, we saw very dramatic responses. What we found in the patients we treated with nitric oxide uh, is that not only has the cost of their hospitalization been much less than with our previous therapies, but their length of stay in the hospital has been shortened dramatically. By applying basic research to a complicated problem, these doctors are able to give breath and hope to those who need it most. Can you open your eye? <laughs> And we'll return for more halftime activities from Lawrence after these messages and a word from the University of Colorado. In the last 30 days at Mike Naughton Ford, we've sold over 100 of these trucks at $15,977. So I bought another 100 of them. Now it's truck month and we've got a $1,000 rebate on them. The new price, just $14,977. 1995 F-150s, all four-wheel drives with air conditioning, anti-lock brakes airbag, and overdrive transmission. While 100 of them last, now just $14,977. In Aurora, or call 1-800-BIG-MIKE. My sister will be 14 soon. Do you know what that is in dog years? <laughs> when mommy takes my temperature, she tells me to put a thermometer under my tongue. I don't. Do you know what it says? Do you know where to find it? 96.5, The Peak, Denver's Rock Alternative. Rock Alternative. This is The Peak. Yeah. Is getting into your briefcase more of a job than your job? Old-fashioned briefcases have two positions, open and closed. Introducing the first briefcases to split the difference. Samsonite's new smart attaches. They open all the way when laid flat, but a patented smart hinge tells them to open like a portfolio when upright. So you can get to your work without all the work. The smart attache series, new from Samsonite. What's the matter, son? I'm kind of worried about a package I sent out for Mr. Jones. A cup of coffee? Well, sending out that package is a big responsibility. Jones knows you'll come through. Hard work, faith, trust in each other. That's what it's all about. Besides, in over 20 years, FedEx has never let me down. What if I didn't use uh, FedEx? <laughs> well, then, you're dead. <laughs> Next time, use FedEx. Get the lights on your way out. CU Bob's Football on News 4 is brought to you by Keystone Light Beer, by United Airlines, by Kaiser Permanente, by Ride Arrangers, by Ankmar Door, and by Samsonite. Pushing on to the next frontier, just a part of the landscape out west. When people came to the west, it was a new frontier. The teachers here, they'll take you to that frontier and say, yes, it's yours. The University of Colorado has made a difference for me. They've given me a great opportunity. Out west on a new frontier with a buffalo robe. The University of Colorado. Getting ready for second heck, half kickoff. CU leading Kansas 24 to 7. There have been four touchdowns scored in this game, and we're going to show you all four of them. Well, won't that be fun? <laughs> First of all, Cordell Stewart's going to hand off to Rashawn Salam. This is a, 
early in the first quarter on their first drive. And look at that hole. Great blocking up front by Naoli and by Derek West. And Salam, although his hit at the very end of that run, gets into the end zone for the first seven points for Colorado. Cordell's going to come back and find Christian Fourier in the corner of the end zone. Wide open. Christian makes a nice catch. Gets the, the ball away from his body. Keeps his feet in bounds. Gets an easy score. Colorado goes up 14-0. And this is what was impressive. Kansas came back on a nice long drive, and they ended it with this Ashiki Preston to Ashunde Smith, 25-yard pass. And Smith had beaten Dalton Simmons in the man-on-man -man coverage. And Kansas climbs to within seven of Colorado, 14-7 at that point. And then Colorado in the second quarter is going to break loose for some more scoring. And this was a dart, just a bullet thrown by Cordell Stewart to Ray Carruth, a 24-yard touchdown make it 21 to 7 great play by Cordell looking off the safeties and then the only bad news for Colorado there's Michael Westbrook wide open and he's hit right in the numbers but also right in the finger and you, you just briefly see it there as he brought his hand up as he was about to grab it and it looked like his index finger or his middle finger in his right hand and it's dislocated as we got the report from Mark McIntosh but it still looks like Michael might be out for second half action, meaning out there on the field to play in the game. As you might expect, total yards and total domination by the Colorado Buffs. Is, actually, it's more dominating in the stats there than it is on the scoreboard, 24 to 7. But Colorado running and passing the ball very well. Rashawn Salam up to 94 yards. Oh, actually, actually I think he's gone over 100 yards. Yeah. yeah. Yep, 104 yards now. Neil Voskaritschian getting set to kick off. Voskaritschian did have a field goal in that first half. And back to receive it, Ashande Smith and George White. Smith is averaging almost 30 yards a kickoff return this year. And they go right to him. He's going to take it from one yard deep. And Smith pushes the ball up to about the 26-yard line. Call it a return of 27. Let's go down to the field. Get more on Michael Westbrook from Mark McIntosh. Yeah, Les, so you guys are talking about it, and you're indeed right. Michael Westbrook will try and make a go of it in the second half. They put two stitches into the index finger on his right hand at halftime. He's going to go out there and see if he can make a go of it. He's having a good game so far, wants it to continue. Back up to you guys. I'd say a good game, 107 yards in reception so far. You bet. His second best game of the year so far. This is Ashiki Preston. Good pressure, finally brought down by Darius Holland on the sack. It's Darius' second sack of the year. And even though his sack total isn't great, he's done a great job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Providing pressure. And Colorado's really come along in their sack production just over the last few weeks and uh, really getting more pressure on the quarterback than they have earlier in the year. Colorado State up by two touchdowns. Good for the Rams. Second and 13 for Kansas. Preston with a nice move in the backfield. And he gets pushed out of bounds at his own 28. Call it a gain of six. Ted Johnson ran him out. You know, I think that was a designed, a designed rollout run all the way. You're going to see Preston with the fake to Levine, and now he's rolling out here, but I don't think he has any intention of throwing this football because Hosea Friday, the wide receiver to that side, wasn't even turning around as if he was running a pattern that would uh, result in him catching the football. He was just trying to run Chris Hudson out of there, did a good job of that, but Preston can only get about uh, oh, five or six yards on the play. Brings up third and seven. Play action. Oh, the ball is loose. And it looks like Holland has it for CU. Yes. The Buffs recover the fumble. Mike Phillips is the one who batted it out of the hands of the quarterback, Ashiki Preston. The two outside linebackers for Colorado, Greg Jones and Mike Phillips, just having a field day, coming off the corner, rushing the passer. And in this instance, it's Phillips getting the sack and getting the fumble watch from the bottom of your screen number 97 and he just beats the all big eight guard number 69 john jones and comes right in and knocks the ball out of preston's hand and harry uh, darius holland comes up with the recovery 
So the Buffs with a good chance to add to that 17-point lead from the 25-yard line of Kansas. Cordell keeps it on the option, picks up six yards. He's inside the 20. Harold Harris and Don Davis made the tackle. Impressive showing for the two outside linebackers for Colorado, Jones and Phillips. Phillips, when you, when you can beat John Jones, who I think is going to be a great professional football player as an offensive lineman. And Hesley Hempstead, we talked about them, two great offensive linemen for uh, Kansas. You can beat them. You're doing something special. On second and four, Salam gets it inside the 15. He picks up the first down. Did you see that Notre Dame score? No, they lose to Florida it. State. Notre Dame now with four losses this year. What was the score? 23 St. Paul? I believe it was 24-17. Here you're going to see Salam, and look at the blocking up front. He's not really touched until he gets about six yards into the back, into the defensive backfield for, for the Jayhawks. You know, a lot of people were talking up Notre Dame as a possible opponent for CU in the Fiesta Bowl. I don't know if the Fiesta wants him with four losses no. now. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think so. Of course, you never know. Notre Dame, very popular. First down for CU. This is Salam again. He's inside the 10. Down to about the 7. Rashawn gets six yards out of that play. They're, they're running that play to death. They're just running that off tackle, off guard pulling. And a lot of people call it the counter tray or the OT for the offensive guard and tackle. They just pull from one side across the formation to the other side, try to kick out the outside linebacker, and then have the tackle lead the play. And they've been very successful, as you can see. 19 rushes, 116 yards already, and we're only a few minutes into the third quarter. Salam again. Tries the same side, the right side. Gets a couple out of it, but he's still a couple yards short of the first down. Kwame Lassiter, the tackle. Up by 95. We'll see you. Look at this. See you has scored 37 and 39 times when inside the opponent's 20 yard line. And actually, I think it's even better than that when they get inside the 10. You know, I, I saw that stat before we came into the ballpark. But I think the most amazing thing is 32 of those times it's been for touchdown. Yeah. Third and two. Again, Salam. Stays on his feet and gets into the end zone. Boy, he took a hit, but wouldn't go down. Sylvester Wright is the one who gave him that pop, but Salam stays on his feet and gets in for the touchdown, his second of the day. We're going to see Rashawn come right at you, and you're right. He's going to get nailed right there by Wright, but what? that's a sign of a great running back when you can keep your balance like Rashawn did. The great ones are able to absorb the blow and somehow just keep their feet. Boscarichian's fourth extra point attempt. And he's batting a thousand. So just like the first half, CU comes right out and scores. And the Buffs lead 31 7. Cousin Hank's wedding. Unbearable. I can see it now. Everybody, let's let dance! Told you. Check it out. Keystone. Who says you can't have a good time at a wedding? You guys care for a beer? You can have a good time with a great tasting beer like Keystone. A smooth, never bitter taste in a specially lined can. You can have a good time. Hello. Keystone, the canned beer. the light clear the air carpool on the next real stories you just got out and so you stopped him? new orleans state police go on a citywide manhunt i think we found him has been hiding down here plus put your hands on the wheel a mother of two is flying high on an la freeway you didn't know that your wheel was flat you ever smoke pcp yeah. LA, we'll have to have this analyzed at the crime lab how long have you been smoking pcp a woman's night in hell on the next real stories of the highway patrol tonight at 10 on denver's tv 20. 
Well, the Buffs score on that last play to make it 31 to 7, but it cost them Leon Merritt. They're checking him out. He came off the field with an injury. Merritt is the freshman running back out of Detroit. Terrific lead blocker when CU goes into the two back set. This is Slevin kicking off, and a Shunday Smith from his own two. Look out, and he's got room. Smith up to his own 48 yard line. He is a dangerous one. As I told you the last time CU kicked off, he's averaging just about 30 yards a return. Yet they keep kicking to him. Yeah. On that return, he got 46 yards. Let's go back and look at the touchdown by Rashawn Salam from the ground level. And Cordell's just going to give him a straight handoff up the middle. Leon Merrick gets a good lead block. And then right there, Sylvester Wright gives him a shot. But Rashawn able to not only keep his feet, but keep his feet moving forward and falls in for the touchdown. CU got the ball by recovering a fumble at the Kansas 25-yard line, and they take it right in. Play is called dead. Flags fly. All right, I'm going to say illegal procedure. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five yards. Repeat first down. So push Kansas back five yards. And that'll bring up first and 15. Glenn Mason, not very happy about his... I guess we're looking at the penalty, and there it is, the left tackle, and that's Rod Jones jumping offside. 11.28 to go, third quarter. Kansas with the ball at its own 43, down 31 to 7. The quick slant in to Rodney Harris. Chris Hudson was on the coverage, Ted Johnson also there. And let's go down to the field, Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. An update on Leon Merritt. It appears he has suffered a concussion. They're checking him out right now. Uh, trainer Dave Burton is looking at him. Looks like Leon Merritt has suffered a concussion. Probably will not return to the ball game. Back to you guys. Yeah, Jimmy, that seems to be the injury of choice this year on the yeah, college and pro level. I, I can't recall so many concussions, especially for NFL quarterbacks this year. Well, I can't recall it either, but of course, I've had a few concussions. <laughs> 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 Kansas tries the middle with Levine there. He doesn't get very far. It's pretty quick for a guy with a cobwebs. Well, you know, I have had I've had <laughs> concussions where you where I've had memory loss before. Actually, the worst one was in high school. That's no fun. You see people that you're supposed to know and, and you don't know who they are. Third and five for Kansas. They're in CU territory now. A good rush put on by Phillips. He almost causes another fumble. And that pass incomplete. The intended receiver was Ashande Smith. Colorado's got a good scheme going for themselves up front. Where they're running some twists and some games up front. And I think it's confusing to see the Kansas offensive line and they're getting Phillips up the middle rather than coming off the corner. I, I tell you, Kansas and the people here in the stadium, so I'm talking the players and the fans, seem to have lost all life right now. <laughs> there is just no energy in this stadium for the Kansas Jayhawks. They've lost interest. Darren Simmons back to punt. Gets off a pretty good one into the wind. And Chris Hudson calls for a fair catch. The ball is down at the CU nine-yard line. And we'll take a break. Try and motivate these people. 31 to 7, see you. Over 700 flights coming and going every business day. Fanning out nonstop to nearly 100 cities. Covering the sky with more flights from Denver than all other airlines combined. A kaleidoscopic array that could only be brought to you by United and United Express. We'll move mountains for you. Come fly our friendly skies. I treat these children and think of them as family. I see them grow up. Uh, we talk, we laugh, we, we play. 
then they get the examination. And I walk through the waiting room, and the kids come and run up and grab me around the legs. Uh, Dr. Reed, Dr. Reed. I don't really see myself as a, as a lifesaver. Anyway, you know, I just I take care of children. That's it. CU wide receiver Michael Westbrook is back in the game despite the dislocated finger on his right hand. He did that in the first half. Well, Michael's had kind of a rough year. Sat out one game for a suspension. Missed last week with a foot problem. Mm -hmm. Today the dislocation. This is Salah dances his way across the 15 up to the 17. Call it a gain of eight. But, but I'll bet Jim that Michael is still glad he came back for this his senior year. Oh, I agree. Although I don't think he's going to see the ball much on this drive. I just have a feeling they're going to give it to Rashawn Salam. And, and he's going to, this is as much dancing as you'll see Rashawn do. That's, that's all his moves right there. He gave you the whole package. You see it from the low angle. Watch as he dances through the line of scrimmage right here. He's got an opening. He avoids one tackler and then another. And just finding a way to get that extra yard. This is Salam again. He's in the open field. Kid trying to throw a block. And Salam finally knocked out by Dorian Brew down to the 20-yard line. Well, that won't hurt his Heisman chances. Uh -uh. And we hadn't seen a big breakaway run from this Heisman Trophy candidate until this one. 63 yards. And you'll see he breaks a tackle there. But breaks another tackle, and that's his strength is his strength and the breaking tackles and he's not going to outrun too many people dorian Bruce finally able to knock him out inside or right at the 20 yard line but Rashawn salam he's become a rallying point you know i talked to a number of players and talking to elliot uzalak the offensive coordinator he said we have a lot of goals still left in the season but a real rallying point a real goal for us is to get Rashawn salam that heisman trophy and he just rambled 63 yards yeah he's usually good for one long run a game at least. Stewart over the middle, almost intercepted by Kwame Lassiter. I also talked to Bob Fellow, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, and he said the problem with trying to prepare for Colorado is trying to get a scout team guy that can try to imitate a Heisman Trophy candidate. How do you do it? They couldn't do it. And you see right there, Cordell Stewart can't find his receiver. On second down, this is Troutman in the game now. His first carry of the afternoon, and he's inside the 15. Call it a gain of six. The true freshman, Troutman, who scored a lot of touchdowns and gotten in quite a few ball games at the end of football games, getting some of that garbage time after Salam sits down. And has had a very good year doing so. You see he gets into the backfield before Salam lays a nice lick on him. But Troutman uh, with 165 yards and five touchdowns coming into the game. Three of those came against Texas. Coming off the field now is Kwame Lassiter, who was hurt on that last play. And an update on Salam's yardage. 194 yards on the ground so far today. And we are just halfway through the third quarter. See, that's the amazing thing, I think, Jimmy, about Rashawn Salam's yardage this year. He hasn't played in the fourth quarter in quite a few games yeah, because CU has been so far ahead. They've given some of the other younger backs his work. Salam again. Down to the 11. A gain of two. He's about a yard short of the first down. Doug Weaver makes the stop. I think Salam's slow, slow getting he's up. He's a little yeah. weary. I don't think he's injured. And we do have a flag. Yeah, back in the end zone, or close to it anyway. On the offense, 15 yards, fourth down. 
So Bill McCartney's men are penalized 15 yards. They're still in field goal range. It brings up fourth down, and Voskaritian comes out for the kick. And that makes it a much more difficult kick, that 15-yard penalty. This will be a 44-yard kick. So far on the year, Voskaritian 8 for 14. His longest kick of the year is 48 yards. And he's only two of eight from beyond 40 yards. The wind behind him. And he hooked it left. No good. So CU cannot take advantage of the long run by Rashawn Salam. The Buffs still with a 31 to 7 lead, however, with 8.04 to go third quarter. Well, Bill McCartney's given an earful to number 89, Desmond Dennis, the tight end, and it might have been Desmond that got called for the personal foul downfield on the Rashawn run that backed CU up and really gave a much more difficult chore to Vasco Richian, and he pulls the field goal left. Kansas takes over at its own 27. Preston to a wide open Smith. He's across midfield. And he could go all the way. Rosga finally catches up with him. Steve Rosga had the angle on him and finally knocks Smith out at the 13-yard line. And what Smith did is he got Dalton Simmons all turned around. What he's going to do is break to the middle, and Smith bites on the middle pattern, and then Simmons is not able to bring down Smith, who's only 5'6", 155 pounds. Dalton Simmons having a rough afternoon against the Shunday. Beaten for a touchdown a little bit earlier, and the Shunday showing a lot of speed and strength for a little guy. Smith going for 60 yards on the pass reception. But it was man-to-man -man coverage. He went on the post-corner route. And there was plenty of time to run that because Preston had plenty of time and plenty of protection up front. He runs to the post. Dalton Simmons bites on it. And then Ashunday Smith goes back to the corner. And Dalton Simmons very slow to react to it. Alan Wilbon being brought out by a member of the training staff. A little shaken up on that last play. Buster. Boy, they have big hopes for Buster Wilbon, don't they? He played a, a lot as a true freshman a year ago, and he rotates in there with Matt Russell and Ted Johnson just to get him some playing time. You know why they call him Buster? <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do with the way he hits people? He busted out of his clothes. He was such a big baby. <laughs> he was the number one rated linebacker in the country coming out of high school. This is June Henley on first down. And he gets inside the Buffs five. They're going to mark him out at the four-yard line. Matt Russell finally ran him out. You're going to see June, June Henley take the pitch. And he's got his option as whether he wants to cut it up or get to the corner. And there he finds a crease. Nice blocking downfield. Is that 83? That's Dewey Houston, the tight end. So it's second and one for Kansas. They're down to the Buffs' four-yard line. This is the fullback, Costello Good, might have gotten a yard. They only need one for a first down. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, Les. Bill McCartney going up and down the sidelines down here, exhorting his boys to get it together. He's very upset with Desmond Dennis that he got the personal foul down there and cost the Buffs a good scoring opportunity. And now to see his defense give up the long play and now allow Kansas to get into scoring position. He's going up and down the sidelines saying, hey, guys, this game ain't over yet. We got to stay in it. They're at 31-7, but I think he doesn't like the way they maybe have taken an emotional nap here in the third quarter. Back up to you guys. They brought the sticks out to measure and see if Kansas got the first down, and it looks like they're about three or four inches short. So that'll bring up third and one. And a very short one at that. Mm -hmm. Colorado defense has been fairly successful at stopping teams inside the 20 yard line. Only 70% of the time that a team has gotten inside the 20 have they come away with scores. 
70% seems like a lot, but actually that's pretty good defensively. This goes to the tailback, and Henley's in. Boy, a big lane there for Jim Henley to run through. They were only looking for the first down, but they got the touchdown. And they're waving the wheat in Kansas. Well, we talked about the huge offensive line, and there you see how they're able to just collapse the inside. They block down on the nose guard, and the defensive end for Colorado is not able to close that gap, and that creates the large hole for June Henley. McCord, the extra point. He's got it. And Kansas now within 17 points of the Buffs with 7.26 to go, third quarter. I can't believe we're going to visit Uncle John. I can just picture this. It's Yopi. <laughs> Knew it. Who says you can't have a good time at Uncle John's? You can have a good time. Yeah. Grab a beer. With a great tasting beer like Keystone. A smooth, never bitter taste in a specially lined can. A great party, Uncle John. Yeah, what's next? Clyde Joe. You can have a good time. Keystone, the can beer. the light clear the air share a ride a special allocation of over 10,000 new Ford trucks in the Rocky Mountain region alone could only mean one thing hard proof that it's Ford truck month we've got the largest truck inventory of the year and you'll find deals like an f-154 by four for just 259 a month or save big on Ranger Bronco Windstar and Explorer Ford Truck Month is the best time to make your best deal. And with a special allocation of trucks, your local Ford dealer has the hard proof to back it up. Kansas and Jeff McCord getting ready to kick off to see you after scoring that touchdown. And back to receive it for the bus of the two true freshmen, Troutman and Henry. And they're lined up at their own 10-yard line because McCord is kicking into that stiff wind. It's high, and it's stopped at about the 15. This is Troutman. And he is stopped at the 19. Well, just when you think the wind is going to work to your advantage, it, it works the opposite way. The ball was hung up so high, it allowed the Kansas kick coverage team to get down there and make a quick tackle on Troutman. Let's go back. You want to know how holes are opened up? Look at number 62, just very number 66, and that is Chris Banks, the offensive guard for Kansas against Clint Moore, defensive tackle for Colorado. That's how holes get open. Cordell Stewart comes out throwing on this possession. It's complete to Salam, and he's up to the 26, a gain of five. Eric Galbraith the tackle. Well, next week the Buffs take on Iowa State. An Iowa State team that might not have head coach Jim Walden. He's hey, Jim suspended. Walden's got his team fired up once again, doesn't he? Only 14-12 in the fourth quarter in his last game ever. Missouri leading 11th ranked Kansas State. On second and five, this is Salam. He's not going anywhere. Might have gotten a yard before Dorian Brew made the tackle. I think you have to give a little bit of credit to the Kansas defense. You know, they've given up a lot of yardage, a lot of points, but the fact is they're still coming up and nailing Rashawn Salam. They're putting some licks on him. They haven't given up. Speaking of having given up, Air Force has come back to tie up 12th ranked Utah, 24 all down at the academy. Third and four for CU at its own 27. Little dump over the middle is complete to McCarty, and he has the first down, and he's across the 35. Galbraith again the stop. 
Talk to Elliot Uzelak. I said, who are some of the guys that you would like to see more get more playing time? And he mentioned Tennyson McCarty as a tight end. So here's a guy that we think is going to be a good player for us. And unfortunately, because we've had so many close games and you play that schedule you do, you don't get some of the second teamers in there as much as you want. McCarty's a guy he wants to see play more. McCarty gets him the first down at their own 37. Cordell looking deep. Incomplete, the intended receiver, Ray Carruth. Dorian Brew on the coverage. Once again, with that win behind him, Cordell just overthrows an open receiver. Watch Cordell. He's got good protection. Nobody in his face. Got good vision down the field. And right there, just out of the reach of Ray Carruth. Pretty good coverage by Dorian Brew. Notice how easy Cordell threw it 50 yards. That's what the pros love about him. The great arm, the great speed. Second and ten. On the option. Salam. And he's to midfield. A gain of 13 yards. Don Davis to stop. Oh my goodness, look at this score. Ruh -ruh. Second quarter, second rank Penn State getting beat in Champaign Urbana by Illinois. 21 to nothing. Well, Luke that Pepper. Illinois that Illinois defense. And that Illinois defense, we said, I mean, a lot of people said how tough it was, but many said, oh, Penn State will be able to tear them up. Well, big goose egg so far. First down at the 50. Salam. A nice move outside, and he gets it inside the 40 of Kansas. That's got to be a flag. Boy, Rashawn was hit after he was about five yards out of bounds by Maurice Gaddy. And it is going to be a flag. And here's the workhorse on his 26th carry, still making breaks, and he obviously steps out of bounds, and Gaddy comes in and, and nails him anyway. You know, Bill McCartney's talked about how he's going to do the prudent thing, that if they're far ahead, he, he will not necessarily leave Rashawn Salam in to get more yardage to enhance his chances for the Heisman Trophy. But Salam's been in quite a bit with a 17-point well, yeah, lead. Yeah, you, you know. know he's going to still get the ball. 26 carries, 219 yards, couple of touchdowns, pretty good day's work. On first down. Salam again, this time a loss. Take a few yards off that total on the day. Harold Harris hit him in the backfield. And as we mentioned, only 14 yards and losses coming into this football game for Rashawn Salam. It's very rare that he loses yardage on any kind of carry. But the reason he does it here is because Harris just beats a good blocker in Christian Fourier. Christian not able to sustain his block, and Harris just comes around and shows the quickness. The only 205 pounds playing defensive end just nails Rashawn right in the chest. The local kick from Lawrence. Cordell to Michael Westbrook. And Michael is down at the 27. He gained one yard on the play. Sylvester Wright, the defensive lineman, made the tackle. And Michael rolling around. It might be that good. finger again. He dislocated one of his fingers in the first half. You can see the fingers are taped up. To the 27. Well, you have to admire his courage in coming back and playing in the football game. And they're just going to try to ease him back into the ro rotation by giving him a little screen pass, the wide receiver screen. And it does look like number 97, Sylvester Wright, comes down right on that hand as he's trying to strip the football. Michael limping a little. But, but it's not his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Six catches on the day for 121 yards despite the adversity. See you leading at 31-14. We've got four minutes to go in the third quarter. Take a look at his right ankle. Ooh, right ooh, there, yep. That he is gets, ugly. Gets a knee right on the ankle. Stewart throws the ball down. Savoy. Did he make the catch? Yes. Savoy goes down to his knees, makes the catch. He's about a half yard short of the first down. I didn't think that ball was going to get to him. 
It's thrown awfully low, and we'll see if Savoy is able to come up with the ball, and certainly is. That ball is into his arms before it hits the ground. It's quite a catch by the freshman, Richard. They love this kid. They know that when Michael Westbrook leaves, they've got a pretty capable kid to replace him in Savoy. It's fourth and one, and CU is going for it. Salam has it, and more. Spins his way down to the four-yard line of Kansas. And, and why, look at all the offensive linemen going over and picking him up. I think that the offensive linemen sense the kind of day that Rashawn Salam is having. And here he's going to go make the first down right here. There's nobody in the corner to stop him. Then when he gets into the secondary, he's spinning off people, punishing the tacklers. And, and then after he goes down, all the offensive linemen are running over there saying, come on, Rashawn, you can do some more. You can do, and, and you can just tell that they have a sense of what he's doing today, and that's such a team goal. We want the Heisman for you, Rashawn. Kansas player down on the field. That, that brings up a good point. Penn State right now getting shut out at Illinois 21 to nothing, and Penn State has two Heisman candidates in running back Kajana Carter and the quarterback Kerry Collins. If they're not mustering any offense there, and Rashawn, who already has 200 yards rushing, could get up into the 250, 300 yard mark. I mean, he's solidifying his number one position as the Heisman candidate. I, I agree with you. I, I think that he needs to put up some big numbers. And the worry was that Kajana Carter from Penn State would put up some big numbers against a real tough Illinois team and maybe steal some of Rashawn's th uh, thunder. Cordell's numbers aren't too bad today either. Two touchdown passes and 200 yards in the air. This is Salam trying to dive in. He gets the touchdown, his third of the afternoon. Look at him. Look, look at everybody going over saying, way to go, Rashawn. We're with you. I mean, you, you're certainly going to congratulate each other on a touchdown anyway, but I just sense that the offensive linemen are, think that there's part of some, something special. And you see good blocking up front. But even with the good blocking, he gets to the one, maybe the half-yard line. He's nailed by three Jayhawks, but still is able to keep his feet driving and get into the end zone. Extra point is no good. Boscarichian pushes it to the right. So Rashawn Salam goes in for the touchdown, but the extra point is missed, and CU's lead is 37-14. I think that's Boscarichian's first miss on the year. 39 for 39 coming into this ballgame. Chip, get, get push-ups in. It's kind of rough when you're wearing a nose that big. <laughs> as soon as you hit the ground, you got to go back up again. Here's Take a replay a of the touchdown. Rashawn, and look at the blocks by Naoli out in front, and there's a number of linemen downfield. But the effort to get into the end zone is all so long. And he did exactly what he was taught. He was hit, but he kept the legs pumping, and he was able to do that Fosbury flop into the end zone. And that's impressive when you do it on about your 28th carry or so, something like that. How many carries does Sean have? I, I believe he's got 28 or 29 carries. 29 carries. When you're still fighting for those extra yards that late in the ball game or after that many carries shows you the type of condition that he's in. 2.55 to go, third quarter. The sun has disappeared. The wind has picked up a little, and it's gotten quite a bit cooler here at Memorial Stadium. Then again, it's the Midwest, and it's getting close to wintertime. Not to be unexpected. Slevin with the kickoff. A Shunday Smith from his own four. And he gets it up to the 24, a return of about 20 yards. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh now for an update on Michael Westbrook's injury. Thank you, Les. You know, he hurt that foot a couple of weeks ago. He missed last week's game, and he'll probably miss the rest of today's game. The foot sprain has reemerged on Michael Westbrook, so it doesn't look like he'll play the rest of the game. An update on Rashawn Salam. He was talking to Bill McCartney a little while ago, and I just talked to Rashawn. I said, what did Coach Max say to you? And he said... He told me just to relax and uh, get in there and have some fun, and he's going to be able to continue to pile up some yards here today against the Kansas Jayhawks. Rashan Salam is not done yet. Back to you guys. I would 
pretty much say Michael Westbrook is uh, out of this game considering he's wearing sandals right now on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Shundai Smith on the reception. Got about eight yards on the play. Dalton Simmons the coverage. Smith and Simmons have gone at it a little bit today. Shende Smith and Dalton Simmons. And unfortunately for the CU football team, Shende Smith has gotten the best of that, but that's about the only battle that they've won during the course of this afternoon. Yeah, I'm sure Dalton's pride hurting a bit, especially uh, after that 60-yard pickup by Smith on the reception in which he bowled over Simmons. Second and one. This is Levine. And he loses a yard. First man to hit him was defensive lineman Shannon Clavel, last week's Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, but he didn't even win player of the, uh, of the game on his own team. I think Ryan Olsen won that for his performance coming off the bench. Shannon Clavel, junior out of New Orleans. A lot of people wondering if he'll be back next year. He's had a pretty good year. And there's been talk that Shannon might leave school a year early to enter the pro draft. Third and two. On the ground is Henley. He gets the first down and a little more, and he's up to his own 40-yard line. Mau Mau makes the tackle. I would encourage kids who are thinking about coming out early in the NFL draft to, to really think about that. I, I think it's a special case, and I, I, I think that too many have made that decision in basketball and football to come out early and have paid the price for it. I like to see kids stay. There are a few very rare exceptions that I think should come out because they're ready for the pro game. On first down, Henley again. It's about three yards. I, I agree with you to a point. I think there are many, many juniors in college who are ready physically to play pro ball. I don't agree when I see kids coming out after their sophomore year. Uh -huh. I don't think they're ready physically or mentally. But but there have been plenty of juniors who have come out and done very well. Now, there's an exception to that with CU. Leonard Renfro came out early and was drafted by Philadelphia, and Leonard's been sitting on the bench quite a bit for the Eagles. He could have probably used another year with the bus. This is Levine. And he gets about five yards out of that before Ted Johnson brings him down. And I think, see, a guy like Shannon Clavell is a guy who uh, really could benefit from another year playing. I don't, I don't think that, I think physically he's big enough and strong enough to play in the NFL, but I think just to develop his, his game, if he wants to be a higher draft pick, I think he should stay in. Agreed. I think that the two tackles they have, Holland and Clavel, although great run defenders and really get a push up the middle, they're not great one-on-one -on -one pass blockers as of yet. They're developing is that. On third and one, Kansas at its own 48-yard line. The give goes to the fullback, and he gets Chris the first Powell. down. That was Chris Powell getting tackled by Vili Mauma. Chris Powell finally got another carry. Came into the ball game. He's started just about every football game for this team. Only had four carries for 11 yards. KU with a first down at the CU 49. And that's the end of the third quarter. With CU leading 37 to 14. We'll be right back to pick up the final stanza. Well, the battery's good, and the star's brand new, so I figure it's got to be the alternator, right? I go into the auto zone, get a new one. When this guy says, well, let's check the old one first. No sense buying something you may not need. Well, turns out it's a voltage regulator. <laughs> I tell you, I could have spent a lot of time swapping out parts till I got it right. But with auto zone, piece of cake. I love this new Ankmar garage door because it's tough. I love our new Ankmar door because it's beautiful and the Liftmaster automatic door opener makes it easy to open and close. 
I like our Ankmar door because it doesn't bruise easily. We need a door that can roll with the punches. I like Ankmar because they've been building garage doors since 1956. Their lifetime guarantee means something, and the insulation helps keep our heating bill down. Whatever your reason, for the best in garage doors and LiftMaster openers, call Ankmar Door 321-2361. Karen Yeager is a Colorado National Bank customer, not just because she can transfer funds by phone through Fastline, or use her Checkster card instead of writing checks, or get cash at 280 Fast Bank ATMs in Colorado. Karen's a loyal customer because only Colorado National puts so many ways of handling her family's money right at her fingertips. CU Bops Football on News 4 is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft, by your Denver Front Range Dodge dealers, by Midas, by First Federal Bank, and by Blackjack Pizza. Les Shapiro and Jim Ryan with you to start the fourth quarter in Lawrence, Kansas, and Coy Detmer possibly getting ready to go into the ball game. Buffs with a semi-cozy 37-14 lead over Kansas. Kansas with the ball at midfield on first down. This is Levine. About three yards on that play. Ted Johnson in on the stop, along with Alan Wilbon. Do you get the feeling that Glenn Mason is just trying to run, get this game over? You know, they've run the ball about six straight times on this drive now. We've gotten a few first downs, but when you're behind 37 to 14 and you've just started the fourth quarter, shouldn't you be trying to pass the ball and score touchdowns? Absolutely. This game's still within reach for Kansas. If they decide they want it to be. I don't think they, I don't think they think it is, I guess. Well, the starting unit still in on offense. This is Levine. He tries the middle and cracks it for another couple of yards. Take a look at our stats through three quarters. See you dominating. I'll tell you what the surprising number is, Les. Look at rushing. It's not surprising that Colorado gets 284, but... Kansas with only 67 yards rushing. This is a team that comes in here averaging about 248 yards a game on the ground. That's pretty good defense for the Buffs. Ironically, they're running it now when they should be passing it. Third and four. Still running it. This is Henley. Does a good job of following his blocking. He's close Rumble. to the first down. There is a ball down. There is a flag down. Colorado's got the football. Yeah, they do. I think Dalton Simmons came up with it. I think Ted Johnson's the one who caused the fumble. Let's take a look at it. And this is a team that has a very good, right there, and that's Ted Johnson knocking the ball out from Henley, and then there's a scramble for it, and there Dalton Simmons at the bottom of that pile, I think, comes up with it. Alan Wilbon also there at the bottom. He Watch right the there as Ted Johnson gets his right arm and just smacks the ball loose, and it's on the ground. And the Buffs run the reverse. This is Carruth. Runs into his <laughs> own man. Chris Naoli needs to get out of the way. <laughs> Jason Thorin will be given credit for the tackle, but you can also give a half a tackle to Chris Naoli. And look at Ray. Ray says, spread out. Come on, big fella. <laughs> Look at that little t the, the pitch by Cor De Detmer. And then Carruth's got plenty of running room, but watch right there. I mean, he just not only runs into him, but he nails his own offensive lineman. This is Troutman. A lot of room up the middle. And he's inside the KU 30. Kwame well, Lassiter, the tackle. A helmet came flying off of Troutman when he got hit. Troutman has another big hole, and, and that's getting to be a broken record in this football game. You see Stoltenberg out there, nice cut block, and then Troutman into Kwame Lassiter, but the offensive line for Colorado today has been outstanding. Troutman picks up the first down, and he gets another carry, and he gets another first down, and he's down to the KU 10-yard line now. Lassiter finally catches up with him. Troutman, one of four now true freshmen that are actually getting some playing time at running back. Troutman is getting the most playing time. Watch right here as 
we see the ISO of him. And another great block. And I think that was Stoltenberg again on the middle linebacker, 38, Jason Thorin. And the offensive line, again, just huge hole. First and goal from the 10. Troutman again. Down to the 5. Sylvester Wright to stop. Well, this is almost too easy, Jimmy. Well, I think Kansas now has kind of, I don't know if they've given up, but they certainly have had their heart taken out of this ball game because this is a team that's plus nine in turnovers. And the two mistakes they've made are two fumbles today. And late in the ball game, when you're just trying to run the ball anyway and, and get out of here, and they fumble the football and give it back to Colorado. And I think that's tough emotionally on the K Kansas Jayhawks. Rotman, another carry. Sylvester Wright, another tackle. And the Buffs are down to the three-yard line. Third and goal from the three. When you get the message from your head coach that he thinks the football game is over, which I think he was giving to his team by running the football at the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth quarter here, not trying to really pass the football, but run it, even on a third and four play when the fumble occurred, then I think that tells your team this game's over, and I think they're checking out. Well, a lot of the fans are certainly checking out. They've left their seats. This is Troutman. He's racked up at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth down. And two or three yards to go to the end zone. Fourth down at the two. The Buffs look like they're going yeah. for Bill McCartney going to forsake the field goal and go for a touchdown. Actually, I think... They, they can get a first down without getting a touchdown at about the half yard line. CU is one for one on fourth down attempts, and this time, Trotman goes in. Hey, if I'm on the Kansas sideline, that would fire me up, Jimmy. You think just because they went for it on fourth down? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, let, let's watch the replay. And he's just going to go over the right side. Chris Naoli on the pull. Number 37. And that is, I don't know, with the lead block there. Oscar Richian. He missed the last extra point, but this one is true. And the Buffs now go up by 30 with 10.47 to go in this game. discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. Not so long ago, Honda Accord and Toyota Camry were considered standards in the industry. Yet in the last two years, Dodge Intrepid has received more awards from the major automotive press than either of them. At a time when other companies were trying to catch up, we said, hey, why not pass? Now get up to 11.47 in total savings and package values during the Dodge Intrepid equipment sale. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over 2 million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. Uh, Jimmy, I'm curious as to why Bill McCartney went for it. In a ball game, he's got locked up. He went for it on fourth down and scored another touchdown. Well, I think that with 10 minutes to go, almost 11 minutes to go in the game, first of all, you're just trying to score anyway. I don't think this game, you know, if there's two minutes to go, maybe it'd be a different story. But we can talk a little bit about that. After George White on the return. And he's up to his own 38-yard line. Let's take a look at the low-level end zone look at Herschel Trotman's 
touchdown run, and he gets the lead block, block from the, number 37. That's Keith Miller, the fullback out of Ovid, Colorado. And another nice block by Naoli and Keith Irwin and the whole group up front. Into the ball game now. At quarterback for Kansas is Mark Williams. He played a little at the end of the first half in place of Ashiki Preston. But getting back to the point on Colorado, certainly with Penn State losing, I think a real impressive big score by Colorado here looks a lot better to possibly move up in the polls. It looks a lot better a big score against Kansas than it will next week against Iowa State because Kansas is regarded as a pretty good football team. And it's a road game. Kansas from its own 39. Now they're throwing, and they're going deep, and Smith is open. And he's got it. Down to the CU 12-yard line. Boy, he is having one big afternoon against this CU defense. I think that was a tremendous throw by Mark Williams, but the moves by Ashunday Smith were outstanding as he gets into the defensive backfield of Colorado. And you see him on Elton Davis right there, and then cuts back to the middle, and a great throw, and an excellent catch. Here's the isolation as he fakes to the outside and then comes back to the inside. And he's got Steve Rosga and Elton Davis turned around. That went for 59 yards. He also has a 60-yard catch. Darryl Price. Darryl Price the tackle on LT Levine. Some other scores, Iowa State giving Nebraska all it can handle in the fourth quarter. The top-ranked Cornhuskers are up by just nine. Kansas State winning, Oklahoma beating the Cowboys. Tenth-ranked CSU having its way with Arkansas State in Fort Collins. Williams getting great pressure from Price. Gets rid of it, incomplete. They are saying he got rid of it. He did get rid of it. I thought they were going to call that down. Maybe even grounding, but... Williams is going to do the play action. He wants to go to the right side on the quick slant. But Price just in there too quickly. Unblocked, as a matter of fact, and all over. Williams, who does a, an excellent job to get rid of it. Glenn Mason upset about something. How about Air Force? If they knock off Utah... Wow. Colorado State, with a win in its final WAC game against Fresno State, could very well go to the Holiday Bowl. They'll be playing for the WAC championship next week. This is Eric Van inside the five, brought down by Vili Mau Mau. I believe that's Van's first carry of the day. So every time you think Kansas is done playing for the afternoon and cashing it in, they come with a nice drive. Other scores, Florida State beats Notre Dame by seven. Florida all over South Carolina, as you might expect. Still early in the Miami-Pittsburgh game. Look at that. Ranked Alabama getting beat, but it's only the second quarter. A lot of close games today among the top-ranked teams. Touchdown, Kansas. That's L.T. Levine. And the few fans who are still here waving the wheat. Right. It just doesn't look the same when there's such a sparse crowd. <laughs> I tell you, when there's a, a full bad crowd, when there's a full crowd, it looks pretty cool in here when they wave that wheat. In a bad crop this afternoon. But look, it's just like a bulldozer coming on the CU defense right there. The Jayhawks offensive line really got a good push up front. Levine is able to get in pretty easily. Well, the Kansas Jayhawks had high hopes coming into this game. A 5-4 and four record. And most of the folks here in Lawrence felt if they won their final two games, they would be invited to a bowl game. Now the best they can do is end up 6-5. and five, And there's still an outside chance for a bowl game, but not very likely. That's Phillips on the sack. He's having a great afternoon. Mike Phillips, the freshman redshirt linebacker out of Marrero, Louisiana. One of many in that Marrero contingent. 
With 8.50 to go in the game, we're going to take a break. See you leading by 24. My sister will be 14 soon. Do you know what that is a dog is? When Mommy takes my temperature, she tells me to put the thermometer under my tongue. I don't. Do you know what this says? Do you know where to find it? 96.5, The Peak, Denver's Rock Alternative. Rock Alternative. This is The Peak. Yeah. The next time you're heading into town, Give RTD's new light rail a try. You're in for quite a ride. At Blackjack Pizza, we deliver more than just great pizza. We deliver a promise. A promise that your pizza is made with the freshest ingredients and the best tasting sauce, all at the best price around. And we deliver Blackjack Pizza. No gimmicks, just great pizza. Call today and order the Blackjack Family Pack. We'll deliver two large, two-topping pizzas, four salads, and four drinks for the value-packed price of $15.99. Call Blackjack now. Well, Kansas hasn't had much to cheer about this afternoon, although the Jayhawks just scored a touchdown to get within 24 points of CU. We've got 8.50 to go in the ball game. Kansas kicking off. This is Troutman. And he decides to down it, so CU will start with the ball at its own 20. Let's look at that last touchdown, Jimmy. There's LT Levine's going to take the pitch, and look at this. He doesn't really get touched until he runs into the back of 66, Hesley Hempstead, and gets into the end zone. And it was just the great push up front that the Jayhawks got on the CU defense. Pretty easy touchdown for LT Levine. You know well, Cordell LT Stewart. Sorry. Uh, tell me, Latrell. That's why they call him LT. <laughs> Cordell Stewart retired for the afternoon. So Coy Detmer is in a quarterback. And Lendon Henry carries the ball there. He gets six yards. Rasan Salam also finished for the afternoon, it looks like. So we'll see plenty of Lendon Henry and Herschel Trotman before this day is over. Get you the final numbers on Rashan Salam. Pretty good day. We know he's up over 220 yards. And three touchdowns. Second and two for the bus. Detmer dumps it off. A nice touch to the tight end, Desmond Dennis. That's the thing about Coy Detmer. He's coming into the game, and CU does not intend to run up the store, score, but all Coy wants to do is throw the ball and get into the end zone. Well, he's another one that Elliot Uzelak talked about getting some playing time. He said, I really would like to get Coy some more playing time during the course of this year, but because of the schedule that Colorado played, that Cordell Stewart was in the ball game late in the game often. He's only thrown the ball Coy has 16 times coming into this football game. He's a quiet kid, but he's as competitive as I've seen on any level. Lendon Henry, close to the first down. Avery Randall to stop. Now we saw Herschel Troutman. We're seeing Lyndon Henry here. He's the other true freshman that hasn't gotten a lot of playing time. They had high hopes for him to really be the breakout back, to be Rashawn Salam's backup, but he had some problems with the NCAA and eligibility as we see a penalty against Colorado is going to call that one back. Hey, Utah tied it up with Air Force, so that game's not over yet. But Colorado's got a number of true freshmen. Leon Merritt, who we saw as a lead backer. Herschel Troutman. Marlon Barnes is another one. And Lyndon Henry. So they've got four true freshman running backs to take over should Rashawn decide to leave next year. Which I hope he doesn't. Well, one of their greatest fears coming into the season was Rashawn Salam getting hurt. Yeah. He's been able to stay healthy. And you see what he's doing when he's healthy. Yet at the same time, they've been able to get these freshmen some work. Detmer throws, complete. That's Savoy. It wasn't a pretty pass, but it had a great touch on it. And one of the strengths for Coy Detmer is his understanding of the offense. He's not 
nearly as athletic as a Cordell Stewart running the option or any of those things, but he stands back in the pocket. He's more of a pure passer. Phil Savoy coming into this game with 14 catches, and he has another couple this afternoon. Well, you know, in Coy's situation, his father, Sonny, coached him through high school, mm -hmm. and he's got a pretty famous brother in Ty Detmer, who won the Heisman Trophy, and now quarterbacks for Green Bay. Yeah, I heard of him before. Coy going deep for James Kidd. Oh. We'll get a flag here. That'll be defensive interference. Are you surprised CU is going deep with a 44-20 to 20 lead? I guess I am a little bit, yeah, but I think they're just trying to get Coy Detmer some work, I guess. James Kidd's going to try to go deep against the true freshman Jason Harris, and Jason Harris is going to have no choice but to just tackle James Kidd right here. I mean, quite obviously a penalty against Jason Harris, who has performed pretty well as a true freshman. Got a start about three weeks ago, his first start for KU, our, a team playing a number of of true freshmen on the defensive side of the ball. I want to talk more about uh, the questions Bill McCartney is going to have to face. Why are you going deep with a 24-point lead and seven and a half minutes to go? Lendon Henry inside the 20. See, now, the, you know, the question bears asking, Jim. I, I, I agree that it does. But see, I, if I'm Glenn Mason or anybody, I say, you're out here to play football. And I'm going to get my second team guys in there. And if I want to throw deep or I want to throw some... Uh, throw the football, so be it. I mean, you're out there to play football and try to score as many points as you can. I'm not saying that you, you, you purposely try to rub somebody's face in it, but Colorado's out there to, to execute their offense, and you have to let them do that. Are they there to uh, bring up their ranking also? Well, yeah, that's I my think that's part of it. More pointedly. Henry drives the left side, gets a couple Henry. of yards. I, I don't know that you'll get the Colorado coaching staff to maybe admit that, but certainly I think the more points they can score here, things are going to get really down to the wire in the rankings. Things have been very close so far, especially between number one and two, and they don't have a chance to ju jump up that far, but with Penn State getting getting beat, and look at this, Alabama's getting beat. Penn State, at the half. Penn State is down 28 to 14 at Illinois, and they're still only in the second quarter. Well, Bill McCartney's been preaching to his kids, hey, there is still an outside chance for a Big 8 title, still an outside chance for number one in the nation. And he's trying to position himself for some upsets on New Year's Day. I'm curious to see what Glenn Mason says about it, though, after the game. I've never been, uh, even when I felt teams were you know, just really dominating. I've never really felt that they, you should have them hold back. I think they are out there to execute their offense and part of their offense is throwing the football game, uh, throwing the football, then they ought to just execute that. Henry again, you know, the other part of it is you've got kids like Floyd Detmer and Lendon Henry and a new offensive line in the ballgame. And these played. kids want to do as well as possible, which means right. scoring. That's right. See, if he had done that with a minute to go in the football game, maybe you have a case. But they threw deep. There were seven minutes to go in the football game. They know they're going to have this possession, maybe another possession, maybe a third possession. You don't know. So you have to go out and just play football. Third and three. See you down to the Kansas 10-yard line. Approaching the five-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Henry gets loose. <laughs> Might have been a face mask there, Jimmy. I think it was, and I think Lyndon Henry had the first down, then lost it, then got it again. And maybe a little more with this flag. See right here, he's going to take the uh, handoff. He's going to cut back right here, and he's got the first down right there. Then he goes backwards. Then he's, he doesn't have it right here, and then he falls forward for the first down, and there's going to be five yards tacked on for the face mask. Kevin Cock. Mask on the defense, half the distance. First down. Reserve defensive lineman for the Jayhawks. Flag for the penalty. So it's an automatic first down, and the Buffs are down to the three-yard line. Leading 44 to 20 with 5-10 to go. Coy throwing into the end zone. It's a touchdown, and it's Blake Anderson. The Colorado touchdown. 
That's Blake's second reception of the year, his first touchdown. Although Blake has been involved in a couple of big plays for Colorado, only his second catch, as you mentioned. Involved in the Hail Mary, involved in the as the holder. Coy Detmer is just going to waft this up, the over-the-shoulder throw and catch. And Blake Anderson runs a nice pattern, but a terrific throw right over the defender, Dorian Brew, by Corey Detmer. Extra point is good, and the Buffs break the half-century barrier. They lead Kansas now 51-20. After midnight, we're going to let it all hang out. Cold filtered Miller genuine craft. After midnight, we're going to check the cold one. <laughs> For those who've discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a very cool place. We're going to call the talk again. So get out of the air and get into the cold. Dakota Sport V6 has more. More horsepower. More shoulder room. More hip room. And more cargo room than a comparable Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. But you don't have to put everything you've got into it. Dakota Sport V6. A little bigger, a lot better. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge. Dear car owners, not everyone knows a car's suspension consists of the shocks, struts, steering, and alignment. Another thing not everyone knows, Midas is a suspension expert. So if your car pulls, shims, or bounces, come to Midas for a thorough inspection and a guarantee on shocks and struts for as long as you own your car. That's the Midas way. CU just scoring a touchdown. They lead the Kansas Jayhawks now 51 to 20. This ought to help in the polls, especially with some of the others surrounding CU struggling to get through their games today. Squib kick from Voskaritian, picked up by George White at his own 15, and he dives into the middle, and he's across the 30-yard line. 4.52 to go in this ballgame. See the nice lofted pass by Coy Detmer right on the money to Blake Anderson. And I tell you, Coy doesn't get a lot of playing time this year, but when he has, he's made the most of it. A, a perfectly executed play and a nice execution on the drive. Nine plays, 80 yards for the score. Cordell Stewart is a senior, so your starting quarterback next year is supposed to be Coy Detmer. Kansas with the ball at its own 31. This is Williams in a quarterback. The ball is tipped by Allen Wilbon, the linebacker, and falls incomplete. Come on, you defensive guys. You get your hands on the ball, you're supposed to catch it. We've had that a lot today, haven't we? Yeah. A lot of linebackers, Ryan. <laughs> How, how That's much why did they're playing on defense. How much did you practice the tip drill oh, or the interception drill? The football, and I think you should when you're... A, uh, playing on defense, but that's probably why we played on defense is that we couldn't catch the ball as good as the guys that were on the other side. Isn't that what they say about defensive backs? If he could catch it, he'd be a receiver. Up the middle is Eric Van, and a nice run gets him across the 40-yard line. You know, coming back to the point about running the score off a little bit, Colorado was obviously going to score. It might go down as a touchdown pass, you know, Cordell, or uh, excuse me, Coy Detmer to Blake Anderson, and some will say, oh, they're, look, they're throwing the ball. But it, from the four-yard line, they're going to run it in for a touchdown either way, and they're just trying, like I said, to execute their offense, and, and they do it well. First down for Kansas, set its own 42. The pitch goes to Van. He goes out of bounds at the 45. Call it a gain of three. And it's going to be a penalty flag, I believe. Kansas side of the field looking for a late hit there. Personal foul. Personal foul on the defense. Number. Number what? I don't know, but they don't hey, usually he was give. Say the number. They don't usually give the number in college. I'm surprised he was about to. They don't name names, and he was about to. Tom Ayler's the head referee. 
Let's see if we can catch a number on the uh, culprit here. Looks like either Phillips or Wilbon. I think it was Wilbon. It looked, it looked inadvertent to me. At the half, Illinois leading second-ranked Penn, Penn State 28-14. to 14. Williams complete to Levine. A lot of room down there. He's still on his feet and inside the 20. Colorado's just playing some soft zones here, and that's going to allow LT Levine to just take the short pass and make it into a long gainer, but he does break some tackles in order to buy himself a couple extra yards. Ohio State winning today. And you know, Ohio State, once again, yelling about head coach John Cooper, and one of the people mentioned as his possible replacement, if he is fired, is the guy on the other side on her, Glenn Mason. So many rumors flying around at this time of the yeah. year. Well, Glenn, Glenn Mason played at Ohio State. And played for Woody Hayes and Earl Bruce. Was recruited by Lou Holtz at Ohio State. So he, he went there imagine, anyway, huh? I would, imagine, I would imagine he would like to go back to his alma mater. <laughs> Be nice, Les. All right. Second and four for Kansas. This is Van again. And he's short of the first down by about a yard. So CU about to run its record on the season to nine and one, five and one in conference. With its final game of the year of the regular season, I should say, coming up next week at home against Iowa State. Now, there's a subject, Iowa State, head coach Jim Walden, criticized the officials last week. The Big 8 slapped him with a suspension. He is suspended for that game against CU, so he's wrapping up his Iowa State career today against Nebraska. What a way to go out, huh? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe they were doing him a favor. <laughs> Would you rather go out against just Nebraska or go out against Nebraska and Colorado? Back-to-back -back football game. Top ranked and seventh ranked teams in the country, respectively. Well, then again, a head coach will look at it as an opportunity to pull off that one last upset. Well, he almost he had a chance today. Only down 14 to 12 I, I, late in the game, and I don't know if that's a final, but Nebraska then was up 21 to 12. That is a final. So Nebraska struggling against Penn or against uh, Iowa State, and number two Penn State losing at the half by a couple of touchdowns to Illinois. Florida State beat Notre Dame by just seven points. There's your Nebraska score. Huskers pulling away a bit. Out to the fourth quarter, 28 to 12. Kansas with fourth and one. They're going for it. From the Buffs nine-yard line, Levine, he has the first down, and he's down to the five. So no give up in Kansas. Even though the fans have. Uh, no give up in, in Kansas, and I admire their players, especially on offense here, for going out and continue to execute their offense and doing it well. You see Levine, 15 rushes, 49 yards, did get in for the touchdown here in this fourth quarter. But I, I thought Glenn Mason kind of sent a signal to his team that he was giving up early in the or late in the third quarter. Williams on the rollout has a man in the end zone. That's a touchdown, Kansas. The receiver is Dewey Houston the third. Another of the true freshmen, and Dewey Houston has only three catches on the year. That's his fourth catch on the year, and two of them have been for touchdowns, so he knows how to get to the end zone. A nice fake. Does the rollout and throws across his body to the tight end coming across the middle. Good execution by Williams, the quarterback. That's always the toughest play to, de to defend as a linebacker is uh, is that bootleg with the, line with the uh, tight end coming from the backside. Kansas going for the two-point conversion. Just short. 
They do not get it. That was Levine on the carry, and he is really perturbed. He did go down before he got to the goal line. Yeah, he didn't get in. We'll see if he gets in here. He's going to take the pitch and that favorite play that they run. And it looks like he trips mostly over his own man. It's hard to tell there where he is in that pile, but it didn't look like he got in up here. Yeah, he was hoping the officials would give him credit for the bounce. <laughs> <laughs> but in college ball, once that knee is down, you're down. In the pros, it would have counted. Not here, though. So with a minute 59 to go, see you with a 51-26 lead on Kansas. I think right now the band outnumbers the fans. Most everybody is vacated. It has gotten pretty chilly here, so you can hardly blame them. Well, there's only one thing to be said about that. Traffic back to Kansas City will be light. Air Force leading Utah. There's an update on the scoreboard here. Falcons are up 34 to 31 in the fourth quarter. Derek Irvin, number 88 for KU, the Jayhawks. You know who his brother is? I, I do. Where's the same number as him, too? <laughs> his brother is Michael Irvin, the all-pro wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. There you go. We've got a lot of uh, relatives on the sidelines of famous pro players here. De Derek has just one catch on the year for nine yards from Plantation, Florida, one of the 17 Irwin siblings. Here's another one, Lamar Sharp. And he is the cousin of our own Shannon Sharp. Onside kick. That's Fourier. He downs the ball in Kansas territory at the 49. Minute 57 to go in the game. So now we're reduced to doing rush with greatness <laughs> routines. <laughs> well, you, you know, when you, when you pull out the flip cards to check out who's making the catches, <laughs> you know it's time to find other topics. <laughs> That last scoring drive went 10 plays for Kansas and 69 yards. Hessler now in at quarterback for the Bucs. John Hessler is a freshman redshirt from Brighton High School. He not only started in football at Brighton, but he's a pretty good hoops player, too. An all-state quarterback out of Brighton. I think that when this is all said and done, you get down into the CU locker room. What do you think that Coach Bill McCartney and his staff is going to say about this one I, I think he's going to say we gave up 26 points and that's too many <laughs> typical coach right I do flags on the play Tennyson McCarty the tight end on the left side I think jumped a little too early but I do I think that he's going to be pleased with the way the offense Dead played ball, false start on the offense five yards repeat second down be pleased with Rashawn Salam getting about 230 yards and rushing and I think that the offensive line executed very well but I think defensively Colorado gave up a lot of yardage and gave up a number of scores that I think Bill McCartney and now that's a final Nebraska obviously but Bill McCartney and Mike Hankwitz in the group is going to say that's too much Lendon Henry the carry Well, now when you go into that Iowa State game, Iowa State, a, a poor team again this season, do you start working on your bowl stuff? Because you know you're going to a bowl no, game? I don't, no, no, no. It's, it's so far away. I think you, you still have to go in and, and just work on the things that you know you need to do to beat Iowa State. In other words, don't take the win against Iowa State for granted. Never. Until you get up by 30 points. Never and then you can you start working on that yet. bowl stuff in the you second. You don't, you don't start working on bowl <laughs> stuff when you're playing enough different teams. I know. I, I sound like the sportscaster, and <laughs> yeah. you sound like the ex-football player right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Hey, Iowa State will come in here minus their head coach or into Folsom Field, minus their head coach, and perhaps they'll be fired up. Lyndon Henry, another of the true freshmen. Boy, wouldn't you love to have holes like that to run through? Huh. That's going to do it. Buffs will let the clock wind down. Seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds to go. 
McCartney and Glenn Mason shaking hands. Well, Mason didn't look too perturbed to see you put a few more points up. No. Michael Westbrook will fly home with a dislocated finger in hopes that he can play next week against Iowa State. And we'll take a break and wrap things up here from Lawrence, Kansas. Ski for only $23 with Coca-Cola and News 4 at Keystone, Breckenridge, and Arapahoe Basin. Just stop by any participating Front Range grocer and pick up specially marked Coca-Cola and Diet Coke Mountain Blast Packs. Look for the ski coupon good for a $23 interchangeable lift ticket at Keystone, Breckenridge, and Arapahoe Basin. Then blast up to the slopes for early season skiing. The Mountain Blast Pack and $23 interchangeable lift ticket. Brought to you by Keystone, Breckenridge, Arapahoe Basin, your Denver area Coca-Cola bottler, and News 4. Denver's talking about Mile High Greyhound Park. It was fantastic. Clean, big, beautiful. We'll be back. I didn't know how to bet, but their new digital video race analyzer really helped. I won a few bucks. The Greyhounds are incredible to watch. The kids loved it. We had a wonderful meal, and the restaurant was, was truly luxurious. Talk about a good time. Enjoy live racing now at Mile High Greyhound Park, 62nd and Colorado Boulevard. It's the talk of the town. Colorado's early miners didn't have time to wait for committees to make decisions when they needed a loan, so they turned to what is now First Federal Bank. Well, I'm Pete Smythe, and today First Federal consumer loan customers still count on low rates and fees and a quick decision right in the local branch. And with 20 Colorado branches, you're never far from the money you need. So for home improvement, a new car, or for any good purpose, stop into the First Federal branch nearest you. Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. He's a cop's cop. You're a class act, Kelly. He tells it like it is. You're a legend in your own mind. And he's packing some pretty serious heat. Well, this is the 44 Magnum Auto Mag. And if properly used, it can remove the fingerprints. Dirty Harry is back. Go ahead. Make my day. Clint Eastwood. Sudden Impact. Monday night at 7 on Denver's TV 20. Well, it was a game that lacked much drama, CU beating Kansas 51-26, but it was a good win for CU, and it was a good day for that man right there. And I've I been hopeful, he, Rashawn I, I think he solidified his position as the favorite for the Heisman Trophy. 230 yards, 29 carries, three touchdowns against a pretty good Kansas defense who was holding teams to 150 yards total, uh, rushing coming into this football game. So the offensive line took it upon themselves that they were going to make it a team goal, and I think they uh, proved their point today. The offensive line was just outstanding, and so was Rashawn Salam. Okay, the final score, CU 51, Kansas 26. The executive producer of today's game was Tom Edwards. Today's game produced by Terry Trivato and directed by Tom Richards. Our field engineer in charge, Dave Porta. For Jim Ryan, Mark McIntosh, and myself, so long from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. This has been a presentation of News 4 Sports, the home of the CU Buffaloes.